Good for you. He brought me all with the ICBK stand for Israel High School of Universal and Practical College. I started at 1 West 125th Street, Harlem, New York. I'm the commanding general, Johanna, you understand? And right, right now, we're walking on Fielding Avenue in NDG on the west side of Montreal. And I'm about to tell you, I have some side news, you understand? Whole thing, yeah. 25th of December, Christmas is a, you understand? It's something to be merry about, to be happy, right? Well, guess what? Not everyone had a Merry Christmas last night, you understand? Yesterday, a brother got killed by the police, you understand, on this very avenue that I'm walking on, right? Yesterday, a young black brother got killed by the police, you understand? Now, we don't have all the details yet. More, inform more information is to come. But it's just to show you how evil our oppressor is, right? Because a little white boy could walk up in a church and shoot nine, ten black brothers and sisters, right? And get arrested, put in handcuffs, and brought to Burger King. You understand? They're able to tackle a mass shooter and bring them into custody. When it comes to our people, they have to lose their life. You understand? Now, y'all better tune in with the ice. Okay, we're going to bring... We're gonna bring it out because this is not being covered by the news or anything like that. No news already speaking about it. You understand? And not only that, two months ago in October, during Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving night, a brother got shot. You understand? Right on this block right here, right behind me where you see the convenience store, a brother got shot to death. You understand? The thing is that the whole block was locked off for about almost 24 hours. But now that a police now that a police murdered a young brother last night, there is no evidence of any investigation or anything like that, you understand? So no, we have to bring it out because no one's going to speak about it. So someone must bring it out. And the only people who are going to bring it out are the in the ICPK, you understand? We're going to speak against it. We're going to speak about it. We're going to make sure, right? We're going to be, we're going to make sure that this is being brought to light, you understand? With that said, I'm preaching off of 500 Barak, y'all, you understand? Tune in for part two, where we're going to bring you out more information on what happened to that young brother. Again, may the Lord be with the, may the, Lord be with the family of the deceased, you understand? May he rise again. Shalom, Lord of Christ. Hey, Shalom, Lord of Christ. This is Prison Officer 500 Barak, y'all, with the ICPK stand for Israelite School of Universal and Practical Law. All right, clap it up, clap it up. That right there was my mighty man, you know, my, my cook and that right there. Priest and officer 500 for Ike Allah bringing a situation out in Canada, you know what I mean? Right now, you know, welcome back, Israel. Where, you know, this is, you know, you're tuning in to our live show, which is called La Pura Neta. You know what I mean? Where we bring the truth. We, we address the issues. We speak about things that affect our people, that affect the Rasa, you know what I mean? And, of course, we're going to speak about black and brown relations, you know what I mean, including, you know, so, with, of course, we're going to speak speak about what happens to our black brothers, too, man, because both of us suffer the same oppression in America. Both of us are going through hell at the hands of, of, of these oppressors, man. So, you know, uh, I had to start the, the, the class out or the, or the show out with, with, with my good brother right here, Priest and Officer Barak Yala bringing out that situation. So you right there, Priest, you want to, you know, elaborate more on what uh, on what just took place? Kawakan, hey, Shalom, Arawan, Yamasham Shabak Tham, to all the Akiam, Yamasham Tham Basham Yoshai, to all the Aquathian. You understand? I'm Priest and Officer 500, Barak Yala, with the ICPK, stand for Israelite School of Universal Practical Knowledge. Started out at 1 West 125th Street, Harlem, New York, under commanding General Yahana. You understand? And tonight, just like every Monday night, we have La Pura Neta, you understand, where we speak about um, the issues plaguing the so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native American community. And what you just seen right now is me going um, on my on the street that's right next to my street, basically, right? Because apparently a brother, a youth, was killed. We don't know if he was gunned down or if he was beat to death. But he was killed by the police um, December 25th, last night, basically. You understand? We're going to get into that on La Neta, right? We're going to show right. that we should celebrate these uh, pagan holidays. These pagan holidays bring death. 
Now, first and foremost, right. you know, Lord be with the family of the deceased. You understand? May the brother rise again, hopefully in the truth. You understand? And the thing is that, just like I pointed out in the video, right? Basically, la what, two months ago, when it was Thanksgiving in Canada, a brother lost his life during his Thanksgiving night while we were celebrating the Feast of Tabernacles. Damn. That's the thing. If you celebrate those pagan holidays, you're going to end up dead. Not just spiritually, physically as well. You never know what could happen. You never know when it will happen. You understand? And the thing is that, okay, so the brother that died during Thanksgiving, there were a whole investigation. The block was locked off for about 20 hours or so. The reason why is because it was most likely another brother who committed the murder. You understand? So the police was looking for someone to get locked up. You understand? They wanted to make an arrest. You understand? Right. They wanted to put a nigger behind bars. You understand? That's what they wanted to do. Right? Now, yesterday, right before La Neta, I was walking, as you can see in the video, I was walking up and down the strip. Right? And the thing is that there is no evidence of any uh, yellow tape or anything like that that would indicate that someone lost their life on the street. You understand? And this is not covered by any news outlet. You understand? The whole neighbor, the neighborhood knows about it because um, we're, we're, we're spreading it on Facebook right now. You understand? Right. And some people in the neighborhood, you ask, I, I, I asked a brethren of mine, right? Did you hear what happened? He's like, no, what happened? And the thing is that it's being, it's being spread. You know, this is like word to mouth, basically. You understand? We are spreading the news right now. You understand? You would not he just lost his life last night. The way I found out with my dad and my dad brought the news to me. And then we right. would not be able to speak on the on this specific as of now, a young bird of police officers. You understand? I'm going to say officers, plural. Or two officer, but they're all in pair. And it was like the brother was unarmed. And it's, this is not something uncommon in the area. So, like a Brock Yala, can you hear me out? On your tour about one. Con, I, I don't know if I think it sounds like you're slipping in and out the matrix over there. I, I don't know what's going down if it's on my end or your end, but yeah, kind of slipping in and out. I... So my end is Tawab. Um, if I may, we put one in the chat if the sound is Tawab. Then if there's any issue, sound right. Like I was saying, this is it's not the first time this happens. Yeah, I think two years ago, they killed brother right. uh, in the same area, right? Street square from uh, by the school I was going by my high school. You understand? And the brother had. Two, 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 three, God, right? nah, so they're saying it's choppy. Right? They're, they're, they're saying it's choppy. Come oh, on, give me one second. No sweat. It's choppy. No sweat. Nah, yeah, I can't hear you right now. Like you're still kind of choppy. No sweat. You know, it, this is why we say the oppressor is the devil. The Bible speaks up because once a brother starts going in heavy on something, right? Now all of a sudden the the the, the internet has to act up. Now all of a sudden, it, the you know what I'm saying? They got his, your messages all choppy. People can't understand what you're saying because that that that's part of me's job, man. He want to make sure. That what we we talk about never gets heard. He wants to make sure that you never find out you're an Israelite. Let me say something, man. Like like that that's heavy. What that brother brought out that he brought out this story that no one's covering. You know what I mean? And it's heavy because that's what happens to us, man. That's what happens to Rasa. How many you know um so called you know Hispanics Mexicans Rasa right um are getting killed at the hands of police at the hands of violence and it's never talked about. It's never mentioned. 
No one ever mentions it, man. And all of a sudden now, when we start talking about it, now all of a sudden the internet has to act up. Now we can't, you know, we can't be heard. Go ahead, Ak. You, you back on? I'm too up now. Yeah, you too up now, priest. Kawakan, like I was saying, um, you know, this is not the first time it happens. It's definitely not going to be the last. So, like, a worse no, is the point. You understand? And the thing is, um, it never. We never go on the news for that. Whenever you right. hear about a murder on the news in my in, in in my ends, it's like because a brother committed an act of violence against another brother, and you know, my neighborhood is called NDG, which stands for Notre Dame de Gaz. But the thing now, because um, which is a predominantly Benjamin neighborhood, and stuff used to happen. I mean, we're in the world, we're in hell, right? They used to dub it no damn good. You understand? Damn. Because they knew it. <laughs> You know, I, I, I my, my zone is called No Damn Good. And the they thing is, that, that. Huh? and the <laughs> thing is, that they, they, you know, they would push a narrative where the neighborhood is still an unsafe place to be. When, you know, we still have a reputation from back in the days and we still do up till this day. But the thing is that, you know, they don't cover anything when it comes, when it relates to them, like when it's them doing right. the murder. I think one of the only times it, they had some news coverage, right, about a murder of the police is because a couple of streets away from mine, I mean, the next street from mine, you know, but a little bit further, further south, they killed a brother. They shot him in the back, I think, three or four times. And it was on video. So now the video was posted to the internet. It went viral. So they had to address the issue. Other than that, if there's no video or if there's no witnesses, they're not... You're just gonna sweep it under the rug. You know, so they're gonna say probably the brother passed away. You understand? Under certain circumstances. They're not gonna, you know, that's why the ICPK is there because we're here to shed the light to what happens to our brothers and sisters in this deep dark hell. You understand? So like the other one. Uh no, go ahead. I, so like, there's something that I want to show. Right? This is a while back. This happened, damn, this happened a long time ago, but I want to elaborate on it because it just comes to show, right, um, how this, this, this situation is not, you know, only exclusive to so-called black people. This is also something exclusive to so-called Hispanics. Well, Salakia, I'm assuming the identity of the brother, but was he a, was he a, a Judite brother, or was he, he um, a, a Mexican? Was he Raza? The brother that died yesterday was a Benjamite brother. Oh, he was a Benjamite, Salakia. So you know what I mean? So we, that that's proof, right, that this issue... That affects, you know, what, what they call them, you know, uh, so-called African Americans also affects West Indians. And it also affects so-called Hispanics. It also affects, you know, um so-called Native American Indians. You know what I mean? This 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 uh the, and that's the ironic thing of it, I is like this this situation, right? Is something that happens across all 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 four of our communities, man. And we 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 haven't woken up to notice that that there's a reason why it's happening. You know what I mean? We we Coward think you know if, if we just comply, if we just you know um, if we all just you know go to church, keep going to church, and 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 and, and accept that white Jesus, get in the Christmas spirit, it'll end. You know what I mean? The more we 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 act white or whatever they want to put on us, man, like acting like the oppressor, that that that's gonna end all the issues. And then worse, man, they be saying that this happens because. It's just the way we are. We just can't get our act together. We're just a bunch of savage people. We're ghetto. We're paisa. We're tra you know what I mean? So many I'm labels are th thrown on us, you know what I mean? That we're an uncivilized people. That's why this happens to us, man. If when it's I only... Mean, Go ahead, Ike. Go ahead. Go. We seen the actual spirit of Christmas. That was the spirit of Christmas, what happened yesterday. You understand? Right. The spirit of Christmas, like I said, it brings death. You understand? Right. The spirit of Thanksgiving a couple of months ago brought death in the neighborhood as well. Yeah, right. like, they, would, they would say Merry Christmas, right? Christmas was not so merry for the family of that young brother. Right. You know, that, that's what you need to, to, to keep in mind, right? What right. you're doing is just celebrating a, a holiday that your oppressor told you to celebrate. You understand? Your feet, your nose, your appendages, you were the gift back in slavery. You understand? And now because right. you think you're free, um, just go ahead and have, you know, a little celebration, whatever the case is. You understand? 
That's just stupid. Salakia. Right, right now, you, you know, you're, you're, what, what, what's going, you just, you know, first of all, to all those Christians out there, G, G, it's, it's not about Christ. Christmas is not about Christ. Right. You understand? Plus, Christ was not born on the 25th of December. Not He wasn't even born in winter in the first place. So what are you celebrating, really? The thing is that some some are ignorant to the fact that it's actually the celebration of Nimrod. You understand? Right. Every, every single so-called holiday or pagan celebration have every symbol has a meaning, right? So the tree represents Nimrod being reborn in the tree as his mother, wife said, you understand? Uh, right. The gifts were just offering to Nimrod, the balls on the tree are just, you know, heads chopped off that were just put on the tree, whatever the case is. And this is what you're worshiping. That's what you need to understand. This is a pagan celebration. You understand? Right. There's nothing merry about this pagan celebration. You understand? And for those who know, I mean, if y'all y'all just want to be pagans, I mean, you know, we can't force you to join the truth and stop being pagans, but just know that something, you know, is right. that y'all want to claim to be, I want to claim y'all free and this and that, but you're just doing what the oppressor tells you to do. Right. You say you, you go against white supremacy, you go against, you know, um, what did this brother say in the comments again? The Americanized um Oh right. <laughs> see, the we American with, and with yeah, um, right. yeah, you know, where there, there's this brother. I mean, I'm I'm assuming he's a brother, right? Right. Something about he he wants to go against the Americanized spirit or what whatever nonsense he said, but then he's celebrating Christmas. Right. Now, how right. do you go against white people and celebrate Christmas? Like make make right. it make sense. You understand? And for those who say, well, I don't celebrate Christmas. I just um, I just go there, you know, to gather with a family or to eat dinner. Mm -hmm. It's like me saying, well, I don't celebrate New Year's, but I'm going to be at the party drinking with everybody. And right. I, you know how stupid does that sound? Right. You understand? Stop being a hypocrite. What you need to do is tune into the classes, tune into the shows, tune into La Neta. You understand? Get this truth, get this knowledge and change yourself. You understand? Otherwise, more death are going to come in our neighborhoods. You understand? And this should be a wake-up call. Not only that we should not celebrate Christmas because it's not of our culture. You understand? But we should see that the curses, you understand, are affecting us only. We should see that right. with the curses, it identifies us as being the actual Israelites. You understand? Right. These other nations, they don't die at the rate that we do, especially during these so-called holidays. Right? So like, yeah, I'm going to leave right, it at that. Now, now, you to why back on what, what, what's heavy, right, is that what you said, right, about, about, the, about the curses. And that's ultimately, you know, because a lot of people don't want to believe, you know, about the artifacts we find. A lot of people don't want to believe about, you know, um, the books that that are out there that talk about how they 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 noticed that you know indigenous people you know um that they were speaking hebrew that they had artifacts that they had they practiced you know um what is the aspect of hebrew culture as as they say right or israelite culture i'll say israelite culture but you know what i mean they don't want to believe in that and that's fine you know what i mean don't believe that but what you can't deny right you can deny, you can claim that the Las Lunas stone is it has been debunked. You can claim that the um Back Creek stone is fake. But you know what isn't fake? Your brother dying at the hands of police. Your brother dying at the hands of another black or brown man. You can't deny 1492. You can't deny, you know what I mean, um Christopher Columbus and the conquistadors and what they did to our people, man. You can't deny our kids in those cages. All that happening, right, is the proof of who we are as a people. We, you know, and a lot of y'all are going crazy, celebrating Christmas, getting high, going through all, all, all you know, all types of hell and, 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 you know, getting, you know, doing all types of drugs and stuff because you want to escape this reality. And you're going crazy because you don't know why this is happening to you. Well, here in the ISUPK under commanding general Yohanna, we can tell you why it's happening. We found out why this is happening to us, man. You know what I mean? 
And one of the main reasons why this is happening is because we don't want to take on the culture of America. We don't want to be the chosen people, man. We want to be like the heathens. We want to be like the so-called white man, like the Asians, like the Arabs, like the East Indian. We'll take on every other culture, you know what I mean, and what they do versus coming back to that Bible, coming back to what, what our ancestors, ancestors, ancestors practice. Because I heard a lot of cats, Barack, y'all. I'm going to tell you something. Not, a lot of cats, are, you know, I had a cat tell me today, you know, um, oh, we don't say the word shalom. No Native American says that word. Well, no, no sweat. Of course, no Native American says shalom. Why? Because his ancestors previously gave up being an Israelite. Kind of a kind. He walked away from being an Israelite. And the Lord also put it as a curse. He was going to cut us off from our inheritance. You know what I mean? Israel wouldn't know that it's Israel. You know what I mean? So that's the proof. When a lot of y'all want to say, oh, my, my, there's no history of us being Israelites. Our elders never taught us about that. No shit. Of course, they didn't teach you about that because they didn't know. They didn't know that you were the chosen people. Because their ancestors didn't want to be Israelites anymore. They wanted to be like the other nations. So, like, yeah, we, we, we got in the scene right now, man. We got um, priest and officer Oscar Ward. Hey, Shalom. I don't want you about Shisha sir. I don't want you about Hey, Shalom. I can you how about Shisha Rakatha? What's going on with y'all Hebrews, man? What's good? It's right here. I don't want to, you know, get Cho going, get it, get it rolling. You know what I mean? The first, we, we opened it up with, with, with priest and officer Barack Yalas, you know, video he did about a situation out there on his side of town. So we kind of, yeah. you know, el elaborating on the curses and the things that affect our people. You know what I mean? The violence. And we're kind of going into what happened this weekend. You know, of course, we just had Christmas and Chris Christmas Eve and Christmas. So you can only imagine how many Israelites died over the weekend celebrating this holiday. Come, come. I'm, I'm here with y'all, man. Let's, let, let's rock it out. Let's get into it. Come on, come on, sir. Is there, is there anything you wanted to say? I don't want anything, you know what I mean? Like, like, we'll give you the floor real quick, sir. Nah, man. I'll just, you know, I'll just go along with y'all, man. I'm just tuning in. So, you know, you just rock it out, you know? Come on, come on, sir. So, like, like um, I, I was telling Officer Baraki Allen right now, right, is that um, we get a lot of, um, what is it, resistance and, and, and hatred and, and all types of... Um, anger towards us when we say indigenous people are Israelites and one of the um, excuses they try to use right is to say that their tribal nation right their their grand elders never spoke about us being Israelites I had a, 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 a cat tell me today that you know why did I use the word Shalom when I was talking about decolonization and saying that Shalom is not in an indigenous language so you know what I mean so my response to that is, well, of course, you, your, your, your ancestors had no recollection of being an Israelite because their ancestors, ancestors didn't want to be Israel anymore. They wanted to be like the other nations. You right. know what I mean? That, and that the Lord said he was going to cut off Israel from their heritage. But Salai, I don't know if I got that right. I know you, you done studied you know, that, that book, especially what's that book called, The Ten Lost Tribes? Con, are you talking to me, Doc? Come on, Con, sir, yeah, to, to you. Uh, what did you say? Uh? That um. Can you hear me clearly though? Yeah, I can. Hear you, I can hear you clearly. I don't want. Oh damn, it's lock it. Can you can you hear us, Alan? Yeah, I can hear y'all. Okay, come on, come. So yeah, I don't want now. Um, I was gonna say um, part of the so reason. Lock it. So lock it by my screen. Like I'm driving, but you know. I'm, nah, no, I'm no, 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 no sweat. I don't want. Come on, come. My question is, sir, like. Is part of the reason why Israelite um, Native Americans say that you know their their tribe their nation has no history or recollection of being an Israelite is that because of that curse in the Bible, right? Um, where the Lord said He was going to cut off Israel from their heritage. Oh yeah, Khan. Absolutely, God. And that that's, that's the proof. Khan, Khan, Khan. You know what I mean? Because that's what they try to say. You know, they, they say we, we we don't have no recollection of being Israel and, and no connection to Israel. So, of course, that's in the Bible. And what, what what is it in Ezekiel where it says if you can go to another people and tell them they're Israelites, they would they would um hearken unto thee. But Israelite is a stiff necked people. Right. Damn so right. You know what I mean? So it's like all the hatred, all the other all the, all the fight we get is in all the resistance native americans not wanting to be israelites is proof that they're israelites 
no. Um, go ahead, yeah. um, please. Oh, go ahead, sir. Salagi. Nah, you're absolutely right. And also, you know, you can you can even go into the book of Deuteronomy, as as you were bringing out to uh, Deuteronomy chapter twenty eight, and um, Deuteronomy chapter twenty eight verse uh, verse fifteen until the end of the chapter. You're gonna come across a verse where it talks about how one of the curses that we would suffer that would be a sign is that another nation would be above us. You right. Know, another nation yeah. would would, um, would be above us. You know, I'm come paraphrasing, come. but it said that we that 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 we even though we were above, another nation would be above us. You right. Know? And that's exactly what happened to the Native Americans. The Native Americans right. had this land, they ruled this land. This was this was our brother's land. Even us, the the so called Mexicans, the so called Latinos, this was our land too. We had our empires. Right. But even though we were powerful, even though we were more advanced than the uh the so called white man, you know, we still fell because we didn't have the one thing that was most important, and that was our heritage. You know. Come, come. And we suffered because of losing our heritage because over time we departed from our laws and commandments. And then it, it, exactly what the Bible said in the curses, that's exactly what happened. You know right. What I mean? Right. We fell. Uh, another nation was above us. Like what's happening to, if, if I may, I don't mean to be long winded, but nah, no sweat out of one. There's no other nation of people who have suffered like the so-called black Hispanic and, and, and and Native Americans, you know, you have the Jewish man, to, a, 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 a old Jewish lady in a wheelchair. No, right. old, the old white woman, Nazi, in a right? Nazi, who who was working with the Nazis at the time while they were exterminating the so-called Jews. She's old, you know. She's a grandmother. They didn't give a damn about none of that. They put it. They rolled her ass in jail in the wheelchair. But then. When black people want to talk about, well, let's talk about what happened to us. They tell you to be quiet. You know, uh, a video on TikTok just came out. How a lady from Spain was like, well, you know, I'm not a part of what my forefathers did to the Mexicans. So I don't hold any, um, I don't hold any blame. You know, whenever we try to talk about how we suffer, we got to be quiet. But we see other nations getting justice also with the Asian hate. They got just as swiftly. Right. So, so it's, right. it's really it's really in our face, man. Like nobody's nobody's suffering like us. We suffer mm -hmm. no justice. You know, we suffer and get no justice, and that's a sign. That's a curse. You know, but that's all I want to say. Come on, come on, sir. Now that's heavy. I don't want you know what I mean. Like, and that's something that our people do not wake up to. They we think in order to answer that, right, we got to go march and talk about no justice, no peace. You know what I mean? Uh, we think we just got to be quiet about it and keep loving America. We think the answer to end this is just go go and listen to Esau's military. Go fight for America, and America will love us, man. Um, I was listening to this podcaster, man, and this this, this brother, man, like it's um he's supposed to be pro rasa, right? And his whole stance because he was talking about the the um I guess the reversal of Title Forty Two. And um, his whole stance is that he's not with, you know, um, Rasa coming over here, you know, um, the, the way they, you know what I mean? Like, like, like we don't, we don't have the resources in America to take care of them. You know what I mean? And that we should love America. <laughs> and that, that's crazy because that's the added, that, that's the other issue with us, man. Like we have so much hatred towards our own, you know what I mean? Like. I understand loving, you know, like, you know what I mean? Like, like not, not condoning, you know, um, gang violence and things like that, man. But then this, this brother said, um, he didn't want, you know, uh, a street vendor in every corner. Um, he didn't say, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, good night. Should I rather a street vendor be in every corner? You know what I mean? That's how we're going to make our money because all that money that that brother makes, he puts it back to his people. Yeah. But what us, man, we, we, we have to be quick to, to, to not support our own, to come against our own. Versus, meanwhile, the biggest number of people here undocumented, right, is the Asians, is the Arabs, is all these other groups, man. But you don't see the Asians saying that their people need to come over here legally. You'll never right. see, you know, the Chinese for Trump. 
you know, and denouncing the Chinese that come here illegally. You don't see Chinese that are patriotic, you know what I mean, that love America. <laughs> you know what I mean? Their stance is they hate America. But they still, you know, um, come over here and, and, and do what they do, man. But us, we think we got to love America. We think we got to get over the things that are done to us. I think the brother's stance was also that, you know, what happened in, to, to us getting our land stolen from America, that that happened a long time ago. We got to get over it and let it go. Like, that's crazy, man. Like, that's that's the problem with us, man. Like, we cannot, we cannot be mad at this oppressor. We have to keep loving him and agree with everything he does versus, you know, um, go ahead, I. He, he, he's a, he, he's just a comfortable slave until, until the cops pull him over and, and and they beat him up half to death while 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 telling him hey go back to Mexico fucking beater right damn right that's very true Ozzy. you understand it's like you know being a comfortable slave is really man, man, a, if I could, a, I could. kind of what kind of I was gonna, just going to say real quick, being a comfortable slave like that brother, right, is really a mental illness, right? It's called the Stockholm Syndrome because, okay, so maybe he may, I don't know the brother personally, I don't know um, exactly the situation, but he may be, I've been born in America, whatever, you understand? There's some brothers born in Canada, France, the UK, and it's like for them, they have a little piece of the pie, and then they have the little American dream, right? They have the house, the family, they have a car, they have a, you know, a, a to paying job. So it's like the narrative of white people oppressing us, they think it's not affecting them because they're so-called successful in life. You understand? But they think it's not affecting them. Now they're being, instead of seeing it as a crime for the nation, they're like, you know, I'm an, I'm an individual. And yeah, I'll marry a white girl, or you know, white people are not their problem. We are, we are our own problem. We are oppressed, like we oppress our own. That's the type. Of, that's the type of thing that these um, black and brown coons would say. You understand? Right. Because in the head, they suffer mentally. They suffer from Stockholm syndrome. That's the, you understand. That's what the brother. That's the real the real problem of the brother right now. Right. Damn right. Hey, can you hear me out? Yeah, man. And, you know, that's that's absolutely true. What the brother's saying about the Stockholm Syndrome, and, you know, once again, it's not only us. It's also the, the, our brothers, the Judite brothers, the Negro brothers. You know? Right. Because a lot of, you know, some, some you know, brothers in the world, they're not really into the, the, the suffering of black people. Right? Maybe some are. I'm pretty sure a lot aren't, but because we, in the truth, we know the history of our brothers, and they know the history of ours. Right. We are the, we're the ones who suffer from Stockholm Syndrome. No other nation suffers from that. You know? Mm-hmm. Right. I come with concert. That's heavy, out of one. And, and I know, for, I know for, for damn sure the Jewish man don't, because they just hold off. They just rolled an old lady in a wheelchair in jail. Right. <laughs> Even with the Asian hate, they didn't say, "Well, you know what? Let's just let's just fold over and, and take this hate and let's just love them." You know, let's love them. They said, "Hell no, nah, stop Asian hate." They did. Right. They, they did in one month. You know what? What we've been trying to do since four hundred years. You know what I'm saying? And this brother right here, he suffers from that Stockholm syndrome, man. And that's a sign. That's another sign that we are the Jews. That's another sign that we are the Jews, man. It's a lot of Go ahead, brother. For me, right? Um, that you know that, that that that's crazy because okay, they bring in that old lady in jail. She's like what ninety years old for the so you know because she was working with Nazis, and the Holocaust happened what about like almost. It's, it's, it's almost been a century. So what? Close to a hundred, close to eighty years ago, right? The Holocaust. But I mean, it's like okay, look, less 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 than eighty years ago, they were poisoning the island of Martinique and Guadeloupe with with um with Claude de Cun, which is 
a cousin of the DDT, a, a chemical they were poisoning the Mexicans with. Yes, then and we can speak about that, right? Right. So like, if, if we bring this up and be like, you know, France is a culprit, and say we need to hold France accountable, you're just telling us to shut our mouth. And it's like, you know, right. they're going to pretend like they didn't know what they were doing, which they admitted that they didn't know what they were doing, but no one can hold them accountable. It's like the oppressor is really the only people that cannot be held, you know, that's feeling like he cannot be held accountable for anything. They would tell Arabs they're terrorists. You understand? They would tell the Chinese, you know, they're what whatever they say to Chinese people, like they're hackers or whatever the case is. You understand? They'll they they'll go to war with Japan, with China, right? They'll go to war with everybody. And then they complain like and then it's a surprise to them that nobody in the world loves loves white people. Literally. Right. Like there is no race in the world, even even among the other heathens, they don't love the oppressors. They know they have to be under their foot. Doesn't mean you understand. It's not because the Arabs conduct business with the Caucasians that they have love for them. Business is business, but they know who their enemy is. You understand? Ain't about good too. I want to go ahead, sir. Uh, our people love America so much that they're willing to abandon their own people. Like this brother here, man, our, our people are destroyed. And that's the mindset we have because we follow we follow the ideology of America. Kind of kind. We wanna, we're not Mexican, we're American. You know? We right. The, <laughs> the whole idea of everybody is American, it makes it makes a brother feel like he's a part of something important. Like he's a part of he's a part of America. He's a part of the red, white, and blue. I'm American. I love white people. I love all Americans. We're together in this. But what that, what our people don't know is that uh, our oppressor is not like that. You know what I mean? Oppressor, the oppressor, an oppressor destroyed. Uh, uh, Afghanistan, that whole area, because they bombed 9 11. They bombed the hell out of that place and destroyed it, and it's destroyed to this day. You know, they, right. they didn't forget. They have an annual every year to remember the 9 11 because it was a tragic event. But they wanted to, but, but this brother says, well, the Aztec stuff was a long time ago. Right. So he's not really being American because if he was American, you know, brother would have been like, "Why? Well, I, I, I ain't going to forget. Because America doesn't forget. I'm not going to forget my people. But the problem is the brother ain't thinking about his people. He's thinking about being American. Right. Like he's thinking about himself. He's thinking about, his, yeah, he's thinking about himself. And another thing I want to point out is that it's Christianity, man. Like, Christianity got our brothers and sisters sissified. You know, it has to do with all, it has to do just with the oppression that we're under. Because we don't have a family household, we don't know how to be masculine. We don't know how to how to be protective over our own people. You know, Christianity makes you sissy. It doesn't tell you that God is a man of war. It doesn't tell you, you know, that scripture that says, "Though I be rude in speech, not in knowledge." These are precepts that show you that the men of the Bible were not pussies. They were not soft. They was men fought for their people, just like America fights for for America. You know, just like the Jewish man, he don't he don't show mercy to to his enemies. You know, and, and, and everybody has that. Everybody has a thing where they defend their people. You know, the Chinese, like you said, Malak, Ma, they're not saying, man, you know what? We don't want more Chinese people coming over here. Damn, no, they're bringing their ass over here, building a right. restaurant, selling cheap ass, you know, selling Chinese food, right? I seen a video where a Chinese guy was like, y'all always talk about how we sell y'all a rat food, how we sell y'all a cat, but y'all keep, keep buying the food from us. Y'all tell us again. Right. You want us to get out of your neighborhood and stop buying the food. You know what is making us rich, and he. But he's being real though. He's being, what he's saying is right. He's being real with it. Look, he's like y'all. Y'all don't like our food. They stop buying from us. But our people. Our, Damn. Our people, buying, our people keep buying the food. They love their people. They only hire Asians. But yeah, right. we're the only. We're the only people who do not think like that. Right? You know what I'm saying? We're, we're the right. people who are brainwashed with Christianity. We love everybody. You know, be American. That's the that's the proof right there. 
Right, right, right. If I could, sir, I just wanted to. I put this image up real quick, right, showing a cross. This is at the. This is from the January six riots. You know what I mean? And and this shows you the spirit of Christianity, which is that same spirit that um, Tio Tomas has had, that Uncle Tom's has. You know what I mean? And 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 I'm glad this happened. I'm glad this picture's here because this right here, this image right here, is the spirit of that Christian church. It's the spirit of America. You know what I mean? Is the spirit of white Jesus, white supremacy? That's why. And and, and our people are so lost, man. They, they 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 got that mark of the beast. I can understand now being in the UPK now. You know what I mean? And hearing the men above me break this down, I can understand how this is the mark of the beast. You know what I mean? Because you you got a Christian cross at the January sixth riots. You know which was a riot because real in reality this oppressor. Was 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 letting it be known that he didn't want to lose his white supremacy. He needed Donald Trump up there, man. He needed Donald Trump to to get another term so that their agenda could be pushed, man. When people, our people, don't realize that that's been the agenda, whether you Republican, whether you Democrat, the agenda of America is to be on top for white people, to be on top in control of everything, quote unquote, white supremacy. You know what I mean? And for us to stay on the bottom, to stay where we're at. You know what I mean? We will never be at the status that white people are at. We have to raise that as a people. No matter how hard we, we love America, no matter how hard we want to speak against our own, we will never gain America's love and respect because in their eyes, we will always be slaves. You know what I mean? And, and, and that's what our people do not understand and do not realize. The, and the best thing that you can do, man, right now is to love your carnal as yourself and support your carnal. Because I'm going to say this, for all you cats out there that have got issue with, quote unquote, illegal immigration, right? Why ain't none of y'all investing businesses in, in, in the barrios? Why ain't none of y'all like supporting, you know, Latino businesses? If we had our own, you know, um, if we invested more in our business, it's about if we, been, we, if we were more united as a people in carnalismo. If we were in the, you know, which is what we teach in the truth, right, in the ISUPK, it's that carnalismo that's going to bring us together as a people. If we were together as a raza and we had our businesses, we would, our people wouldn't have to come over here, you know, undocumented. You know what I mean? Because I don't know what one of the clauses is, right, that they, they got to find employment out here, some something like that, right? And even if they did, they would have the money to, to have them working, have, you know what I mean? We'd have that support to get our people in here. That's how the Asians do it. You know what I mean? So because we're not united as a people because we want to be American, that's why we suffer the way we suffer, man. And images like this prove the, the true agenda of America. But yeah, I'll, I'll give the floor back. So did we lose Barack Yala? So my God, when I'm back, I have to step out real quick. Oh no, nah, no sweat. Uh, but you know what I'm saying? Like, like that's that's the reality, man, of, of, of what we, we got going on here. And that's why these Asians, these Arabs, they all come together with their own. They, they got the businesses, and that's why these people are able to come in here illegally in high numbers, and, and America never points the, the finger at them. I don't know, heard, man. These people take advantage of the Section 8, of the um loans and all types of government programs. Meanwhile, they tell you, black and brown man and woman, don't you ever dare use that EBT. Don't you ever dare leech out the system. We don't have enough, um, what is it, money to sustain you. And meanwhile, all these other nations do it, man. Ain't that some shit? Ain't that crazy, man? God. Yeah, man. We, we got to step out of this, this American mindset, this American way of living. Like, everything about it is just destroying us. You know, right. our, the, you know, our decision making, how we live, how we think, how we feel, literally, it, like it's literally in our soul and it's controlling us, whether whether our brothers know it or not. Like you kind of like right. you, you kind of have to do like an out of body experience. Does that make sense? Right. <laughs> but, <laughs> right, sir. But it's hard to do it when you're in the world. It's like, right. it's, it's, it's like it's exactly like the movie The Matrix, you know. You um, you know, it's like you're in the world, and you think the life is this way, but then the 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 red pill, right? Now you see this for how they really are. 
you know what I mean? And once you do that, man, once you come into the ISUBK and you learn the truth, you know, the scripture says you, first you got to be taught the milk. And then later on, you taught the, the more complex things about the Bible, right? Right. And that's what you got to do, man. You got to come up in here, learn the truth. And little by little, you're going to start detaching yourself from this world. And you're going to see it for what it really is. And you're going to understand, okay. man, a lot of things I did in the world, the decisions I made, it wasn't really even you doing it. You know, it was just you, just your flesh, just, you know, the American, the American mind control. Once you come into the right. truth, oh, no, nah, you, you wake up, I, you wake up, you're, right. not pork, you're not eating shrimp, you're not eating crab, you, you know, you're not just sleeping with any sister. And then you start looking at other people like, damn, like, these brothers are sick. Like, you know how to fight demons. You know how to fight, you know, you know, you, you know how to get rid of bad habits. I know, you know, you can say that's a demon. You know what I mean? So the breathe just so the people can understand, you know, you learn how to fight the old you. Right. That's exactly that's exactly what our people need, man. Like the church has failed us. You know, America has failed us. Presidents failed us. Community leaders, so so called leaders failed us. You know, the the the, the Aztec God failed us. You know what I'm saying? The That's heavy out of one. I know this damn Wakanda movie with the Aztec brother. Oh man! <laughs> Where the hell? What's that? What's that damn dragon called? Kukulkan. Yeah, Kukulkan. That nigga failed us. Where is he at? Where was he? you know? Where is he at? I mean, where is the book where he tells us, "Look, this is how you get out of this right. Situation. This is how you get out of the situation. This is why you're in this situation, right? This is the solution. Where's his? Where's Kukulkan? Damn guidance out of this hell we in. Did he put it right. Hell nah, man. But that book is out there. It's called the right. Bible. The most the most high the living God, he 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 tells us in there, this is why y'all niggas is in here. This is why y'all in oppression. This is how you get out of it. And these is this is the solution. Right. What has that? I don't see I don't see Kanye West talking about uh black people or 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 are fucking uh are uh Egyptians. A lot of black people believe in being Egyptian. But why is, right. <laughs> why is Kanye West talking about black people are Jews and why is he being persecuted for it? Why is it such a big deal? If it's not yeah. true, it gives a damn. But he's being persecuted. Why? Because it's the truth. People in power know the truth. Same thing with Kyrie Irving. All he did is post a goddamn book. And right. what happened? Oh, now you gotta pay five five hundred thousand, however much he has to pay. You gotta give an apology. You gotta go to council to know how to respect the culture. All this BS, all, all right. the kind of video that he right. on the on the website that he didn't create. He's like anybody else posting it. But why did they come after him? Because he's an influencer. He has juice. He's a basketball player. They don't want the truth to get out. You feel me? Like it's, it's right. like at this point, it's everywhere. Like this is the truth. I don't, I, I don't see um I don't see the American government talking about you know what the, I don't like that Black Panther movie. It's inspiring too many Mexicans to turn back to their dragon god. Why? <laughs> Why, aren't they doing that? Why aren't they doing that? Because they know that dragon god ain't shit. Right. They know, they know, they know they're not the real power, but they do, right. got, a problem, they, they do got a problem with with us breaking up to the truth that we the Israelites. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because if I could, I don't want. What I was at, if I could add to that, I'm not seeing that anger and that outrage from the indigenous community. You know what I mean? Why are you not charging, you know, Marvel with, with, with cultural appropriation or misrepresentation of, of, of Aztec and Mayan and Mexica culture? What is it? Mexica and Mayan culture, man. Mm -hmm. Y'all was all happy about that, that, that Black Panther movie, man. Oh, oh, now we got Latino representation in there. We got indigenous representation in there. Meantime, I mean, I haven't seen the movie yet. So like it, Barack, y'all. I just have not had a chance to get to check out, checking out that movie. But I heard, man, that that Namor gets, you know, spoiler alert for people who haven't seen it yet. That hey, Namor so got like, defeated by the... Oh, you haven't seen Go ahead, I don't want to. I'm, I'm going to just put my camera on pause. I'll be back, though. I'm, I'm still in the show. No sweat. You know what I mean? 
But I, I'm warning everybody, spoiler alert, if you haven't <laughs> seen the movie yet. I haven't, but I don't know already so much. I'm going to say this, man. I heard that Namor gets defeated by the sister. Not um, um, Black Panther's sister, right? Am I right? Is, is that what happened? Oh, come on. Well, <laughs> let me break it down. It's like a spoiler alert. It's like Officer Malatma said, you know. <laughs> so the Black Panther in that movie is a sister playing the role of an African. And at the end of the day, Kuku Khan or Namor, the brother, gets defeated by her. And he and she tells Damn. him, if you don't give up, I'm going to just kill you. Right. Like, you understand? It's just, there's so many wrong things in that movie. Right. Whether it's promoting, you know, us being Africans, us siding with the white man, um, mm, black, black versus brown, and it's then the woman king narrative, right? The emasculation. The black, right, basically emasculation of a brother, you know, bowing yeah, down man. To, a, to, a, who's, to an African who's actually a sister, by the way, right? But it's like, it's so, it's, there's so many, so many red flags in that movie, you understand? Good, right. But it just, that movie really is a, you can break down that movie with um, Salah Kim, Psalm chapter 83, you understand? Yeah. So they're going against us and making sure that, you know, not only we're going against each other, but we are identifying with a culture that is not actually ours, you understand? Instead right. of being Israelites, we want to we wanna worship Kukul Khan. Instead of, instead of being Judites and Benjamites, we want to, you know, Say Wakanda forever, which is some of the <laughs> so like, if I could, bro, I can, let's, let me say about real quick, man. Um, I had a co worker come at me, he did that. That Wakanda forever, um, what's, what's that shit called? They do this. <laughs> oh, good night. I told the brother, I told the brother, like, whoa, we don't do that here. <laughs> good night. I had to hit him with that one. <laughs> just a lock, you the one. The only time. You you would have you would have seen me do the X. It was not nah, for Wakanda. It's for DMX. I ain't, but I know. Wakanda. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> I'm, here, I'm here for X. You know. You understand? I'm here for DMX. That's it. Wakanda forever. Salaki. Wakanda for never. You right. Nah, it's Salaki, bro. Y'all, you ever heard on um, Captain Mashak what he said? How he said it? He said, "Wakanda. What kind of shit is this?" <laughs> damn right oh, I got well, it, man. you know because at the end of the day some people I, the thing is that okay so called negro brothers actually right. believe that the idea of having Wakanda is a utopia you understand right. it's an idea in their mind thinking you know we could actually build a Wakanda first of all you're not African second of all you know Africans like they they beefing with each other to a, to a whole other level. You think African right. all African countries are united? Tribes within the countries are fighting against each other, are killing each other. Right. You understand? It is a false narrative thinking, oh, Africa is united. That's false. Like I don't right. know who put that that that, that 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 stupidness in your mind, Salakia. You understand? But that's false. Africa Esau. is not united. Damn right, right. Esau. In Salaka, you know, I had a, uh, I think I sent it to you on Instagram, right? Where it says, you know, um, the gas prices are, go are going so high, you know, that they're charging uh, uh, the brothers and sisters more in the Caribbean for gas, you Good know, coming from, from the Middle East, whatever the case is, you understand? And the thing is that they were saying, I don't, I don't remember exactly what they were saying. But the last comment at the bottom of the post was saying, you know, um, it just shows you that pan-Africanism doesn't work. Right. You understand? It should tell you something. You trying to identify as Africans, it don't work. They don't give a damn about right, it. Right. Eddie, let me, let me say this. If I could, Barack, y'all, let me, let me say this real quick, man. One thing I'm noticing, right, is that a lot of these groups, right, like all these pro-black and pro-brown groups, a lot of them, right, they're no different than the cats in purple. And I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say why. They all they all care about numbers. They care about numbers. You know what I mean? They care about how deep they are. So um them caring about, you know, gaining more people into their movement, they accept, you know, LGBTQ. They accept feminist feminism, right? 
all these principles from America because, you know, they know that that's going to bring more people in, like a Christian church. You know what I mean? So okay. it's like, you, you, you give up. What, what's, what's the, um, the scripture that says, why does thou trimmest thy, thy ways to seek love? Like, you start your revolutionary group on some morals and some principles, right, to, to awake your people. But little by little, you start giving that up just so you can get more people in. Just so you can get more money, you know what I mean? Which is what I've noticed, you know what I mean? With all these groups, they all, all of a sudden now, they they, they pro, you know, um, LGBTQ, they pro feminist, they pro, you know, matriarch, whatever you want to call it. And meanwhile, uh, they pro Skittles. Right. They pro Skittles, man, you know what I mean? So it's like, (laughs) whatever, you know what I mean? Like, like, that's the problem. Like, you got to tell people the truth, man. You can't be supporting, you know, um, all that, you know, all the, all that what goes against your culture, and they, and all of a sudden claim it's part of your culture just because you know you you want members to come in, you want more people to have support for your group. You got to stand on what you believe in, man. You got to stand on the truth, and and oh, that and man. and that's why your group fails. That's why all these groups have failed, man. What was the whole big thing, man? Like um. NFAC, right? They were trying to you know. Um, I, I remember when there was this group, man, like like this um popular Facebook group, and and they mentioned the NFAC to try to say that they're better than the UPK. Meanwhile, what what happened to their leader, man? Isn't he jammed up right now, locked up? I mean, I, it's, it's, it's not to sidebar too much, but it's just to to show the point that when you're when you're not in here with us, right, and and you doing things of the world, like. You're not going to succeed. Without the most high on your side, you're not going to succeed in whatever movement you want to start and do. And take note of all the revolutionary groups that have, you know, came on and and, and have failed throughout the history of being in this stinking country, man. You know what I mean? That were supposed to be pro-black and pro-brown groups, and they all failed. Right. It's It's just to show you that, you know, there is no safe place outside of the ICPK. Right. Outside of the ICPK, nobody gives a damn about you. ICPK, you know, we don't we don't compromise. The Israeli School of Universal Practical Knowledge is that we don't compromise for nothing. The men in general, your honor, doesn't compromise for no no goddamn reason. You could offer the men in general, your honor, five million dollars. He's not going to compromise the brotherhood that we have to do. You understand? Right. Like, that, see, it's just like, for instance, Black Lives Matter. Right. Right. I think the leader of Black Lives Matter, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's a white woman. Damn, that's crazy. You know white but woman, I, damn. <laughs> and, and, and we went from we went from Black Lives Matter to All Lives Matter to Blue Lives Matter. Like Good you're putting such a goddamn devil. We cannot have anything. Right, right. Like, we're we're pleading, you understand, to, to 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 stop killing us. But then right. you have to turn around to let's just stop killing everybody. But not everybody is being killed by the police, like we are. So how does that right. even make sense? Then you want to talk about blue lives matter, as if cops are dying every day. Right, right. You understand? It's like they won't let us have anything. Right, right now. Right. Lucky, I'm I'm making some of the best, you know, salsa picante. I could come out with salsa picante, and you know, the white man would just put a trademark on my thing and just steal my recipe, and I would not be able to do anything about it. And he's gonna make billions of dollars off of it. Right. That's the oppressor. He's a goddamn thief. Like right. the only thing he owns is his skill to murder all across the earth. That's it. No sweat, no sweat. No. That's heavy you say that because it's true, man. Like a lot of these things that are out there, right? All these inventions, um, you, you, the, white, the the oppressor, the so-called white man gets the credit for it, but you come to find out it was a black or brown man that that came up with it. Your color TV, man, like came from a Mexican. Ain't that some shit, Bar- Barack Yala? Came from a Mexican. Um, your plumbing, your um, what what is um the astrology, the astronomy, you know, like. Go ahead. Huck. Don't make it too complicated. The dust pan. We invented the dust pan. The dust pan. Good night. I... <laughs> like we invented the doorknob. The doorknob. Damn. Right. 
you know, they 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 want to claim like we're savages, we're dirty and everything. Just like you said, the plumbing, the sewer system, they, 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 the blueprint came from the Mayans. Right. In the you understand? But white people really, they, they, they can't do, like I said, they can't, they can't do nothing correct but murder. That's it. That's all they're good at. You understand? Right. Even the way, like, they're using their firearms today. Right. They stole the gunpowder from the Moabites, from the Chinese. Right, right. You understand? Like, they're good at murdering, but they're not even good at crafting the weapons that they're murdered with. You understand? They have to thief everything. Right. You understand? That, that, that's heavy, uh, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, and this whole time, we done been taught that we, we can't invent anything. We, we're good for nothing. You know what I mean? Right. And then they, they came up with everything. And this is, you know what I mean? And this is why, let, let me say this, Barack, y'all. I'm going to touch, I'm going to bring this out every every show we do. So that for the people that want to say we're racist, for the people that want to accuse us of whatever nonsense, I'm going to say this. This is why we say the so-called white man is the devil the Bible speaks of. Not because he's blonde hair and blue eyed or because of his race. The word devil just means deceiver. He's a deceiver. How did he get the land from the Native Americans? He deceived them. How did he steal the Me Mexico from, from, how did he steal, you know, the land from Mexico? He deceived them. How did he enslave, you know, the the you know my my black brothers and sisters? He deceived them. You know what I mean? Kind of what kind? That, how did he did, did we get you know lose our um our own business practices, our own you know freedom? He deceived us into giving it up. Right. You know what I mean? And that that's why we say they're the devil. That's why we say he's the deceiver because he's lied to us and fooled us and used it to destroy man. Ain't got nothing to do with how you look or the color of your skin. It's what your nation does to my nation. That's right, why I see it. So like I don't if I may. So so like Brock, y'all, I want to say this. Just the fact that you're trying to accuse me of racism because I'm trying to bring out, you know, what your nation does to my nation is the proof that you're the devil the Bible speaks of. Oh, so like it, Brock, y'all. Uh, you, you have the floor, the floor preach. I was just gonna add that real quick. Like you said, it don't matter. Like they're white. We don't. We don't. We don't. We don't care about how you look. You could have been the green man. The green man would have been the goddamn devil. The Bible speaks of. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's all. It's all about. It's all about your actions. Yes, right. Then, and w when we look at it, right, like you're oppressing every single nation on the face of the earth. Not that we give a damn about the other nations or the heathens. You understand? But when we look at it, right, the Africans sold us to, to the Caucasians. And then you turn around right. and stab them in the back as well. You understand? Right. You're you're making deals left and right with the with the Arabs, but then you're talking about you know let's fight terrorism. You know just invaded the country, looking for weapons of mass destructions or whatever, just because you want uh, oil and opium. You understand? You're waging a 20 year war with Afghanistan. You ended up losing the war because you wanted what opium and and oil. You understand? You want to go against China because I don't know maybe you just you don't like the dim sum, whatever the case is. You understand? Everything that the white man does, literally, I mean, it just, every single action he takes, especially against us, the children of Israel, just proves to the whole white world that he is the goddamn devil the Bible speaks of. You understand? Right. There is not an ounce of good in, in his being. You understand? Right. There is nothing but evil inside of them they could try i mean salaki i was watching a show right um this woman had the audacity to say that she is teaching um native american culture to her students and she's a caucasian woman yes she's not she's crazy native american history that's what she's teaching she's, she's a native you know teaching native american history so my, the first thing that came to, to the mind, right, is like, so are you teaching your students that your forefathers decimated the Native American Indians and put them on reservations, like concentration camps? Are, is it is it what you're teaching to your students? Or are you just talking about, well, we, we, we came as pilgrims, we came to teach them Christianity because they didn't have a God and, you know, Thanksgiving came up. So what version? Right. Native American history are you teaching? 
that's what came to my head right away. You understand? And Stalakia, you, you, we know goddamn well she's not telling, she's not telling them the truth that her, that she's in the position that she's in, and right. then living on the thing that she's on because they committed genocide against the Native American Indians, Stalakia. Nah, that you, you too, I, I, what, that's heavy because it's like you know she's gonna teach that you know Thanksgiving was a was a day when when the Native Americans and the Pilgrims came together in Kumbaya and they they ate turkey and shared it together you know <laughs> that that's why they they celebrate it today. And that's if what I may, go ahead, sir. You know, I just like to 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 say something, and that's how you know because you know when the Israelite school UPK people think that we just hate white people, like we hate all white people, that we just out there hurting white people. You know, attacking them, and they think we just physically hate them. You know, when we say God was racist, you know what I mean? You know what right. Come on, sir. I can hear you. They think we're talking about the racism that white people have towards black people, or, or Mexicans, or Native Americans. Right. You know, their problem is violence, hang you, lynch you, and all that. When racism really just means to prefer your people above another. Right, and that's perfectly natural. It's natural for a white man to love the white woman, it's for him to love his people, support his people. That doesn't mean right. he hurt black people, but they do. You know what I'm saying? Like they have in the past, and there's still white people who do it today, who target black people, who target, um, you know, us Hispanics, Native Americans, you know. And this lady right here, her having, I'm, I'm sure she's not. I'm, you know, I don't know her. Right? She's a teacher. She might not have any hate towards black people, Hispanic people, you know? She's a teacher. I'm sure if, she, if, some, if somebody was a racist, they wouldn't want to be a teacher because you got to teach children. But she has the ability to make her people look good, even though what they even though they did a terrible thing. So that's how you that's how you know that this is white people's heaven. Right. That's how you know that oh, white cool. privilege. Yep, that's that's power. The ability to teach something to children and to lie to them about it. You're taking away the history from them and you're making your people look good instead of saying the truth about them. Like this is the white man's heaven. My like, people think heaven is a place when you go when you die. That's Christianity. Right. They taught us that in Christianity and in slavery to our black brothers and to the to us too. They they was the, the 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 Catholic priest, the priest, they would say turn to Christianity or or go up to heaven with with you know or go up to heaven because that was their belief. So we thinking well oh well this this is just earth. You know when white people know not all white people right but there's people in power who know the truth that what that heaven is on earth. This is the white man's heaven. Like you telling me this ain't heaven? Like this is where you eat food. You can you you know the brother just said he makes some bomb ass pico de gallo. That sends dopamine to your mind when you eat that bomb ass food. You get dopamine rush right. through it. <laughs> right. dopamine rush. <laughs> right. You get that dope. You know what I'm saying? You get that dopamine rush <laughs> your mind when you're working out. When you have a beautiful family, when you have a beautiful wife, when you're having a good conversation with another person, when you're having a good day, you know, when you overcome obstacles. It feels good, right? Eat the food, it feels good. It tastes good. You know, this is heaven, but it's not our heaven. You know what I'm saying? Heaven is on earth, but we are in hell, man. We're in goddamn hell because we're not serving our God, man. This is where you feel pain. This is where you feel hurt, depression, so much pain that people commit suicide. You know what I mean? This is hell, man, and this is heaven, but this is not our heaven. How you know it's a white man's heaven? What I, from what I just said, from what the brother just pointed out, and what's another thing, man? The goddamn uh, white man is everything. He's Superman, he's Spider-Man, he's Clark Kent, he's Batman. He's the badass uh, 007 character in the movies. He's white Jesus. Right. He's Santa Claus. Santa Claus is comes from a black man the whole thing is has to do with, with a black brother and then they incorporated other things to create a holiday that pleases people to make money off of them which is what they always do what they do which is what they did with the holiday but you know this is their heaven and guess who and guess what else white people are they're everything including 
God's chosen people. So they can right. be God's chosen people. They're God's chosen people, and they're the people who raped, robbed, and murdered you. So they can be murderers right. and God's people at the same time. What did that Jewish man say? The Jewish man said on the on the on the what's that show called? The Breakfast Club. Right. You know, Captain Garlock put the video out. I think his name is uh. uh Ari something. RB Boyle. Something like that. Right? Ari Goyim. He said how he has to make money off of black people making making the rap music that they make. That's a bad influence on black people. He said, hey, I gotta eat. I gotta eat. So, so white people can be can oppress another people to make money. And they can be God's people. So they could be the, the murderers and they could be the God's people. They could be Batman. You know, you know what I'm saying? They 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 everybody. They're goddamn they're the Native Americans. Right. How do you know? Because of damn avatar. Now it's they're avatar. Avatar. You know what I'm saying? It's ridiculous, man. This is the white man's heaven. You understand? So what is it? What do we gotta say? Where how do we get where the fuck is our heaven at? Right. You know what I'm if, if, if we're oppressed in their heaven, I want to be a part of their heaven. Right. See? I like that one scene, sir. I'm gonna I'm bring it out that scene in a minute, man. Um, it's from a movie, but I'm gonna say that you know what I mean. Like, um, it's heavy that you bring that out because I remember at my slavery, right? Um, there's one of the delivery guys that that picks up, you know, like all, all the orders we ship out, and he's an Edomite. And you know, I thought I'd ask him like, "Hey, man, have you traveled the world before?" Just, just, just out of curious, you know what I mean? Like, just wanted to know, you know what I mean? And this devil tells me he's been to so many places, you know what I mean? He's been like, he's naming all the all the foreign like places, and you know, like um, he's been to all everywhere in Mexico. He's been to you know, um, I forgot like so somewhere out there in the Pacific, you know what I mean? Like like out there in in in, in those um. Paradise, you know, when you think of paradise, those like Tahiti, that uh, places like that. Uh-huh. And I think to myself as he's tell as he's telling me this, it's like, good night, man. Like this really is your heaven, Mister White Man. Right. You can go. You 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 working this job, and you can still go to wherever you want to go. You know what I mean? You 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 you're free to roam the earth. Meanwhile, it's a struggle for me to get to you know. <laughs> For me to get to the Bay Area, to get to San Bernardino, do you know what I mean? Salakia. <laughs> it's like the Salakia out of one. Go ahead, I... just, just add on what you were saying, you know, because I'm like slavery sometimes. Like I have people on the phone, they tell me, "Oh, where I'm from?" So I'm like, "Hey, yeah, um, I'm from the West Indies. I'm from Martinique, whatever." But I'm in Canada. Like, what the hell are you doing in Canada? The, the 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 Caribbean is a paradise. Why are you not over there right now? So in the back of my head, you know, it's like, yeah, I have to respond to them in a politically correct way, you know, not not nothing get personal, whatever the case is. But in my head, it's like, I'm over here because of the goddamn devil the Bible speaks of. You and right. brought them on plantations, and you made it you made it so hard for us to stay on the island that we have, you know, to move out the island now. Like, what are you talking about? What am, I, what am I here for? And a lot of these devils, right, they call from overseas. So they're on the island calling, requesting for assistance, be like, you know, you should be here right now. I'm like, I wish I was there. The thing is that I wish I was there with, you know, and you were at the other hand, end of the, of the, of the whip. You understand? <laughs> right. That, you know, it's like they have the audacity to, to like tell our people, oh, so what are you? Uh, oh, you're Mexican. Why are you not living in Mexico right now? It's so beautiful. Over My there. God. Oh, Jamaican. Well, Jamaica is so beautiful. Why are you not there right now? Like, if I was you, I would be living in the islands. I'll be living in Peru, Colombia, whatever the case is. And then, why are you not living there right now? Why are you not in DR? Yeah. Well, I'm living. I had to move from, from, where, from, from where I was born because y'all poisoned the land. Y'all poisoned the water. You understand? And y'all make sure, like, you know, you still oppress us on the land, even though we're supposed to be free from slavery. What are you talking about? What am I doing here? You understand? And I have to leave one, uh, you know, one place where I'm oppressed to be oppressed over here in the land that you rule. Well, you rule the whole earth, anyways. But you understand what I'm where I'm getting at, right? It's like right. one war zone to to another war zone. I'm leaving one plantation to go on another plantation. 
That's all right. I could do. You understand? Because you're the goddamn devil the Bible speaks of. Everywhere right. I go is a temptation for me. You understand? So like if I could, um, Brock, y'all, I don't know if you can see your screen, but I shared a picture, right? Because we were talking about how food is, is, is um, you know, after Ashka War brought out the dopamine and the food. And then, you know, how you brought, we you know, I don't know how you brought about the so-called white man playing everything. Here we got an example of a so-called white man playing a Cuban and the food <laughs> being the drug and the meme. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so, <laughs> like uh... So I had to share that real quick, you know what I mean? Just to just to show the point, right? That this is how these oppressors live, man. This is their heaven. As as I said, man, and, and even a homeless white man like gets, you know what I mean? Like he can clean himself up, get off, you know, um, get off the drugs, get a haircut, take a shower, dress up all nice, he'll get a job. You know what I mean? He'll get he'll get, you know, that high paying job. I, I remember there was a news article that, that I saw a long time ago, man. And, and, you know, I was in the world. I didn't know, you know, like, think much of it. But I remember the title, and it was talking about how an ex-con, you know, um, owning his own bread company. And it was an Edomite. Right. You know what I mean? So it's like you see how, like, this kingdom works in their favor. You know what I mean? It's a, a lucky out of one. Go ahead. I a, a homeless white man. Is a is a vagabond, you understand? So he do, he don't care about getting off the drugs or you know getting a shape up to get a job. He feels it's in, in his natural habitat. He wish he was back in the caves. Right. You understand? Like, like that's, thing. that's another thing, right? Like, okay, European is a term coined, you know, to identify Caucasian people when they actually took over Europe. Right. That's you understand? They came they came out of the caves and just spread like a goddamn virus. Because right. That's what we call, you know, that's why there was a period called the Dark Ages because people of color used to rule Europe. And they just have right. to come and, and, and take over. That's all they did. And then all they do is take over. They took over the tacos. They come up with Taco Bell. You understand? They take over the music. Now Eminem is the rap god. Right? Yeah. They take over the rock and roll. You understand? Salakia. They, they take over everything. My God. I, I remember that movie, Eight Mile Priest. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, hey, Salakia. I'm surprised I didn't see no Caucasian mariachi yet. Oh, man. It's only a matter of time. I, it's only a matter of time. It, 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 it's in the works. You know what I mean? They, you're going to see a, a, a Caucasian mariachi on there. I already got... um. Uh, Shakira, you know what I mean? Like like she's a she's um Shakira if, if she's an Ishmaelite. She's she's an Ishmaelite, right? But but she's playing she's a, you know, everybody thinks she's a sister. You got yeah. Sama Hayek, everybody thinks she's a sister, you know what I mean? And she's also another mm -hmm. Ishmaelite. That, you, know that's I mean? the thing, you know, because we let white people take over everything that we have, the other nations think, you know, might as well do the same. They're not gonna say right. anything about it. Right. It's like I think what's his name? I think it's Ricky Martin. Right. Ricky he's Martin. A he's an Edomite. Right. He's a Spaniard, you understand? Like he oh. said, Tom and Shakira are Ishmaelites. But we're thinking, oh Shakira, she's the uh, she's the queen of Latin music. Can I say no more? Right? Let me let me show you this picture. Come on, come on. I said because um, everybody thinks Antonio Banderas is 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 you know a, a brother. He's a he's another heathen. Well, I mean, he always said he was from Spain, right? And they had I, him play this role. I want to talk about you know uh, uh, you know taking you know um stealing an idea and asserting themselves. I don't know if you ever if you remember ever seen this movie. And so yeah, like, when we, when we're pulling up the picture, I think also Benicio del Toro. Oh, right? another one. Because it's like it's funny how you you know you're so-called Puerto Rican, Mexican, but out of nowhere you just go to Spain and you get your Spanish, you know, your your Spanish citizenship. Now come to find out, like your your background is being a Spaniard. You understand? You're like oh, your your grandparents are from Catalan or. Wherever, wherever is stupid, 
you know, where, where, wherever oppressors come from in Spain, whatever the case is, you understand? Just like Messi is not okay. Let me just clarify that. Messi, stop He's idolizing not. Messi. Messi is a goddamn Italian, right? He's not a brother. Because I was having, I was having a talk with one of the brothers, right? He was like, "Yeah, I, I, I want, I want the Naftali to win, win the cup." I'm like, "Yeah, me too." You know why? Because I want, I just don't want friends to win. But at the end of the day, Messi's a Spaniard. I right. said, "Messi, the Roman." He's like, "Oh yeah, I'm not, yeah, Messi is not a brother." Most of the most of the team, I think there's only two brothers on the on the Argentinian team. You understand? Kind of. I don't know if you ever remember this movie. He had Antonio Banderas play Pancho Villa. You know what I mean? <laughs> Which is just crazy. You know what I mean? Like, like this, this, this is the whitewashing that these oppressors do. You know what I mean? Had a dance band. You play Pancho Villa. Salak out of one. That reminds me of uh, they were trying to make a biopic of Michael Jackson, and they would have a devil play Michael Jackson. Right. Yeah, that's great. I mean, they 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 thief everything. They're the right. greatest people on the face of the earth. No right. greater thief than the Caucasian people. Right. Then, then and that's good. right. If I may, go ahead, hey, sir. So, is Antonio Banderas? Is he a, a heathen? He's, He's a, a heathen. I don't want. He's a Spaniard. Oh, the Spaniard. He's a Spaniard, yeah. yeah that's crazy, because yeah, you know they had him play so, uh, that. They had him play Zoro. The mariachi. He played Kamakan, uh, Zoro, right? Right, Kamakan. And that story is based off of Joaquin Murrieta, a Mexican. You know Khan, look. Kamakan, sir. That's crazy. I mean. That just you know adds more. That that just adds more to the brother's point. Right, right. I mean, Antonio Banderas never really. It's not like Antonio Banderas actually identified as being a brother. Like he born in Spain. Like he will, you know, he's a proud Spaniard. He's a proud Spaniard. Right. He's a proud. Like emphasize on proud. He's a proud Spaniard. Come, come. Right, right. Like, also, what's crazy is that white people are such goddamn devils. It's like, you know, I get it. You are proud to be who you are, but ain't nothing, you know, prideful. Like, you know, what are you proud about? Be, be, be being the biggest rapist on the face of the earth? Is it right. is, is what you're proud about? And it's like, because I've seen that video, right, about the sister talking about, you know, she shouldn't feel bad uh, because, um, her ancestors, you know, talking about all oh, Latinos are complaining about Spaniards. They put them in slavery. She shouldn't feel bad, you know. Like she's a proud Spaniard. Why? Why would she feel bad about you know? That's what she basically. That's what she's saying. Why would she feel bad? What is there to feel bad about? I mean, listen, you are the biggest rapist on the face of the earth. Right. You're the biggest thief, the biggest murderer, and then you y'all would turn around and talk about oh we need to save the planet. We need to save the right. animal. We need to save the water. Y'all, the number one reason why the water is poisoned. Right. They made it all, all the animals. There's no black rhinoceros because y'all like to hunt. Right. And then you want to turn around and talk about, well, we shouldn't kill animals or we have to be vegan, this and that. We shouldn't murder. But y'all are the biggest murderers. We're in the, con the, the whole planet is in the condition that it's in because of y'all. What are you talking right. about? Right, right. right. So I got one. No, no, you too wild. Like if I could, it's just to add to that. You know what I mean? Like it's like Zoro. I, I, you know what I mean? Like yeah, Khan, Khan, Khan. You know, like he. So Zoro is based off Joaquin Murrieta. I didn't know that growing up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But the, the the one that tripped me out is the Pancho Villa. You had a Spaniard play Pancho Villa. You know, because Pancho Villa was one of the more you know known, like like first one of the first people when when you talk about Mexican revolutionaries. It's no different, right? Than than when what they did with that that um with the Harriet Tubman movie movie, right? Where they had an African play her, and it's like the oppressor, right? Does that on purpose? He he, he didn't he didn't pick Pancho, you know um he didn't 
pick Antonio Banderas to play Pancho Villa because you know he, he couldn't find a, a, a well enough Mexican actor. Now it's on the spirit. These devils know who we are. They know what this does to us. They know the effect and power that that entertainment, that movies, that music, all that has on us. So they need to, you know, do whatever they can to kill that revolutionary spirit in us. You know what I mean? Right, dog. And uh, if I could add to that, dog, you know, um, so this Pancho Villa movie, it wasn't a big hit, right? It wasn't like, do you know what year that movie came out? 2003. So it wasn't a big, do you remember being in a big hit, being in theaters and people? I don't remember it. Like, I don't remember it being in theaters, but I, I did watch it. Like, and it was all over. Like it was like it, I don't even think it made theaters. I think it just came out like on HBO. Was it a good movie? Yeah, it was a good movie. You know, of course, you know. But now, but just the fact that you had um Antonio Banderas play Pancho Villa is like, damn, you know. <laughs> yeah, and you know the reason why I'm asking is because you know um, this Wakanda movie was a big deal, right? And you know they had an actual Mexican, I believe, you know Mexican who actually speaks. The ancient language, right? Right. They brought him into the movie. And, you know, the Jewish man, he runs Hollywood. They, you know, they came from there where they used to be. And they came over here and, and, and started Hollywood. So they know what they're doing. Like you said, uh, they know exactly what they're doing. And they re that's why they put that It's Correct Brother in that Wakanda movie. Because they want, they actually want Mexicans to believe that garbage. They want us to believe in a fantasy, in a fantasy world. You know, they want, us, they want us to look at that and say, you know what? Yeah, man, that's us. Yeah, yeah. you know, we, that's our God. Yeah, you if know, I could. Feel good. Salaki, right, Adam. If I right. could just finish, you know. Like, Go ahead, Adam. Right. Salaki. One real quick. Nice to watch. It's no sweat. And then you have fucking, uh, you have Pancho Villa. You know, imagine if they had an actual Issacarite brother playing that. And it was big, and it was in theaters, man. Like you said, that would ignite that revolutionary spirit, you know? Why? Because it's actual, it's actual history. That's an actual uh, historical figure. So that you know, they know what they're doing. That's why they. That's why that movie oh, wasn't that big. You know, that's probably why they didn't have a real Instagram clip on Trivia. You know, because like you're saying, uh, the movies. Music, all that it has actual, you know, it has power to control people to influence you. you know right. I mean? If I could, if I could, go ahead. Or did you go ahead, Brock? I'll, 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 I'll bring my point out when, when, once you're done. To what I want, real quick, you know. Now the thing is that just like, um, I don't want, just, you know, um, the thing is like. So they really wanted Mexicans to think like, you know, that that's what, what we should be, that, you know, we should follow Kukul Khan and everything. At the end of the day, Mexicans were actually mad. They put a dark Issacarite, you know, in the leading role of uh, Kukul Khan in the morning. Right. He's not representing us. You know, we don't see ourselves in him. You understand? It's, it, they were basically saying we need a white Mexican, a white looking Mexican, you understand? Or, you know, a Euro Latino. Mm -hmm. you understand? That's that's what they really wanted to see. You understand? That's crazy, and, you know, man. Because at the end of the day, now let me show you how it doesn't make sense. Because it's like saying you know a white a white looking Latino would represent the whole Mexico, right? What, what about the dark skinned Mexicans? How right. does it represent them? You understand? Right. And they, that that's what they really really feeling bad about. And I had a talk with uh Officer Lahab about it. Yes, and we look into it, it, it's not necessarily like Spaniards identifying as Mexicans or any gringos over there that were mad about it. It was actual actual light skinned Mexicans that were mad about it. Right. The actual brothers and sisters talking about, well, you know, he's not representing us. You know, they they felt they felt like they, they were they were left out, but you understand. And the thing is that why would you feel bad about having a dark brother, as if you know you you never seen a dark Mexican before? Right. You understand? Like I have my nigga, my nigga, my my nigga El, El Mijo. I mean, he he's a dark Mexican. He'll tell you like, yo, he's a, you know, I see <laughs> Mexican or niggas. You understand? Right. 
I mean, he he's a Mexican Mexican. I don't think there's more Mexican than this nigga. You understand? Right. But at the end of the day, it's like, listen, there is like, how how, how could you make the difference between that Mexican and, and another Mexican? Right. He, he he's not Mexican enough because he's too dark. Right, man. That that that's crazy, man. Like it's like that, and that comes back to the colorism. You know what I mean? Which you can thank white Jesus for that. But here's the other part to that is that Namor, right? You have a brother, a carnal on there that represents the Rasa hardcore, and his character gets emasculated practically. You know what I mean? Kind of kind. The the movie with with Pancho Villa starring Antonio Banderas, Pancho Villa was never emasculated on the movie. You know what I mean? So you can see the spiritual warfare that this oppressor is putting on us. You know what I mean? And 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 that that right there, you know that. That shows the real purpose of these movies, which is to, like I said, to kill that 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 revolutionary spirit, and the colorism, which keeps us more divided, keeps us more, you know, um, blind. You know what I mean? Because what 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 does you know what I mean? You you think that brother's not Mexican enough because he's darker than you? When you know, like, if you want to really think about it, well, no, nah, I don't want to say that. You know what I mean? But I would say, you know what I mean? But it's like. That that you know that's your brother. You should be happy for your brother to be up there. You know what I mean? Just just because the brother's a darker tone of you doesn't mean he's not your people. You know what I mean? Just because that brother's a lighter tone of you doesn't mean he's not your people. Kind of you let this oppressor push that lie of colorism, thinking that our skin tone, our hair texture, how we look, is is you know um classifies us as who we are as a people. Man, that's why today, right, Barack L, we we struggle. I won't say struggle, so like that's the wrong word to say. But man, we 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 got the we we got all these people opposing us and trying to you know um come at us about about you know so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans being the same people because they look at the people at brothers and sisters' hair texture, they look at their skin color, and they say and they look and they be like they look at these three groups and be like, there's no way we could all be the same people. There's no way that the three of us are the same nation of people. You know what I mean? Because of you know, because of how we look. Mm -hmm. It's a lot, y'all. The one. Just want to oh, add yeah. something about the movies. You know, they they always trying to push the narrative. You know, that we should go against each other. And you know, a lot of times, you know, like you said, they use, um, and they use heathens to help them out with it. You know, it reminds me of the movie Blood In Blood Out. Where they had, you know, at some point in the movie, um, I forgot what's the brother's name, right? You know, but he was talking about, yo, let's black and brown unite, whatever the case is. And Miklo was going against that, you know. And not only that, but Miklo in the movie, he's a white boy. You understand? Right. His mother's Mexican, but we know you're the seed of your father. So Miklo is literally a, he's an Edomite. You understand? Rakiala. So, no, okay. Go ahead, Asalaki. Go ahead, Alex. So like, I'm, 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 I'm gonna bring my point out when you're done. Come on, come on. So it's like no, you know. So. Yeah. Go ahead. At some point, like, you know, while while we're supposed to unite, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, in the movie, um, I forgot, I, I forgot who who gave the old man the pick, but the old man, old man, end up starting, end up stabbing um the Mexican brother. And the race right. war erupted right. in the jail. You understand? And Miko was all for the race war as well. Right. So I can go ahead, Ottawa. Nah, I was gonna say here's the other witchcraft of, of, of that. I is that you got on there, right? You got Miko's character played by an actor who's an Israelite because his dad is Mexican. And then you have Paco's character, right? Which is played by a heathen. You know what I mean? Because his dad is a so-called white man. I think he's German, something like that. But Paco, everyone thinks Paco is really Rasa, and everyone thinks Miko's really a, a, a Edomite. But the messed up part is you see the way their characters are portrayed. Miklo's character, you know, um, ends up being in prison for the rest of his life. He's a he's a screw up throughout his whole life. You know what I mean? Go in the in the gang war. You know, in the gang life. You know, going to prison. Getting out, going back in, 
then he becomes a gang leader serving the rest of his life, Ender for the rest of his life. Baco's character, he's a gang member, but he turns his life around. He becomes a cop. He lives out there in the world. You know what I mean? He's not locked yeah. up, you know? And he's the one played by the heathen. Meanwhile, the Israelite is the one that has to be in prison the rest of his life. You know what I mean? Like, so that I was to say that's the other part to it, which is it comes back to that spiritual warfare. You know what I mean? And he has to hate his own brother. You know what I mean? Kind of what kind? So that's that's you know like that's the other part to it. You know what I mean? He became the the one. The Israelite is the one that that that's in prison for the rest of his life, and the heathen is the one. That that has that successful life, you know what I mean. So I just want to add another thing, right? So it's like it's the wild to you to have dark Mexicans portray, you know, the bad, you know, what we call the bad side, you know. Right. But it's it's not the wild to have a dark Mexican hero. You understand? That's crazy, like, man. Like even even in the even in even in the Wakanda movie. Like Namor is not actually the bad guy, because another spoiler alert: Salakia, Namor no basically <laughs> he 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 went to the to he seen some sisters on on the on the shore. He's like, hey, you know what? That that white that white scientist, uh, he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna fuck us up. Whatever the case is, give it give him to me and uh, let me deal with him. You know, let me kill him. Whatever the case is, you right. know, they refuse to deal with the white man, but you know. The, the white people were actually being a threat to the water people, to the more people. He was like, you know, let me deal with him. Let me make sure, you know, my people is safe. At the same time, your people are going to be safe as well because they're going to turn around and stab you in the back, these goddamn devils. Wakanda said, no, we're going to side with white people. Yes, then, so at the end of the day, the more wasn't even the villain. But since in the movie, he, you know, according to the storyline, he's the villain. It's like, why not use a dark skinned Mexican as the villain? You understand? Right. And Barack that, Yale, if I could, okay. not to interrupt you, I just want to ask you real quick. I to ask, who is the person that started that movement against Namor's character? You know what I mean? Because I don't think it just woke up one day. It's, Hell no. We have a, a dark-skinned Mexican place. I had to have been someone tell someone, oh, you know what I mean? They make up some propaganda, and that's why there's this pushback. You know what I mean? Kind of a con. Really, it's, 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 it's the oppressor. It's the goddamn devil. You understand? Right. It, it, it goes so far back. I mean, even even when with the telenovelas, right? Right, right. When, when's the last time you, you ever seen a dark a dark brother on the telenovelas? Or a sister, as a matter of fact. You understand? Even at, what's the movie? The movie Madrigal. That little cartoon movie, you know, they portray a Colombian family. You know, they try to include their brothers and sisters here and there. You know, they're Darcyan people. But now the brother, you know, one of the brothers in the movie, he uh, he has an Edomite wife. So they always have right. to include themselves in the picture. Right. Either they play a, a, a main role or they are included, right? You know, they're they're the husband or they're they're the wife of the brother or sister. Yes, then right. they can't. They can't let us have anything. They won't. They will not leave us in peace, because it's like imagine now they would. They would have a movie with, you know, black and brown people, you know, just siding with each other, mingling with each other. You understand? Just like just like we're supposed to be. What if we right. actually have? You understand? What if, what if this was mainstream? You understand? Because that's another way to control the masses you know they 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 put um whatever program on tv right now they have you know they're pushing the um, the skittles narrative on tv you understand <laughs> children it's a lot we have you know we have we have to watch what we say we don't want to get canceled right right so, you know, they 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 selling the skittle they're selling packs of skittles on tv is <laughs> you, know, right. you get what i'm saying Right, there's a certain narrative that's being pushed. What about pushing black and brown love? You understand? Because right. I remember that TV show. I think it was um, yeah, what's it called? I think it's it's, it's like something Mexicans. It's called a uh, uh, hent hent what hentified or gentrification? Oh, hent oh my God! I can't even I, want to get started on that show. Well, the you know the the show doesn't start to up. Two sisters are kissing. 
I was right. like, wait, what's going on? You understand? It's like whenever they, they try to we try to have a Tawab show, there's always something that has to be wrong. Always something that has right. to go against us. There's always, you know, a, there is a subliminal message. It's like, you know, oh, that the, the main character, she's Mexican, right? But she has to be a lesbian. Right. You understand? That's 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 the thing now. She's Mexican, but she has to be a lesbian. You understand? And, and they put it's not even like it's a one little scene, you understand? This goes throughout the show. You understand? And then she has to mingle with white people, this and that. Then she has, you know, the I remember that scene where she had to make a painting on the wall, you know, to represent the neighborhood and the people. What she did, she painted two sodomites on the wall kissing each other. It the neighborhood. Like, damn. Huh? You understand? The woman, the woman who, who was owning the store, she said, Yeah, you need to take that shit off right now. There were some cholos passing by talking about what is this? You right. know, you know, you, you need to you need to take that shit off or whatever the case is, you understand? If and you would right. it's, it's, it's a lucky other one. Go ahead. Yeah, you know what's now nah, I'll say real quick, I you know what? I'm gonna say this, Brad, just real quick because I don't want to interrupt you too much. It's like you see, like it's like there's another movie with with something similar with the with with the skittle the skittles up in there, right? But go ahead, go ahead, Lanny, go ahead, finish your point now. Go ahead, do your thing. So look at real quick. I was just gonna say this, right? That person who told her, you know, um, do that painting and said, Oh, the painting is beautiful, was the owner of right. the building, it was a the white settlement. Wow. Mm -hmm. So it's like not only is a Caucasian owning the building in our neighborhood, but it's a sodomite trying to, you know, push uh, some more skittles. You understand? That's what he was doing. And he was in and, and, and he prayed on the perfect person to do it. He picked a sister from the neighborhood who was, you know, in the you know, um, part of the pack of skittles. It's a lot, kid. That's crazy, out because you know, it's like you there, Barack Yala. Kawa Kawa, so like you one. No, no, you too. About so I just make sure you know, I want to make sure you didn't, you didn't fall off for nothing. It's like they forced, like, th this is what they push on us. Why is it that shows about us, shows that concern our issues have to have the, 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 the Skittles people, has got, got to have something to do with sodomites? There's right. another movie that I was going to mention. That's why, but uh, you know, when I interrupt you, I was going to mention, I don't know if you've ever seen this movie. It's called La Mission. And La, La Mission. Okay, Khan, I'm, I'm gonna put it up on the screen real quick. The, the cover to the movie. It's with the with the with, with a couple of characters from Blood In Blood Out. But the whole thing, right, is that um. Let me see. Let me, let me put the picture up real quick. La Mission has Paco in there, right? Of course, Paco's not. He's he's, a, he's not. He's a heathen, right? But what he plays and portrays in that movie is 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 the you know. Is what the issue is, you know. Where let's see if I find a better picture. So he plays, you know, a a a, a veterano OG, you know, Kamakan, and he has a son that's a sodomite. Good and the night. whole movie is about him, you know, um, not supporting his son's lifestyle, and that whole time in the movie is just villainizing him. For not supporting that lifestyle, making him seem like he's his own enemy because he he um you know um doesn't support except the son being a sodomite. And it's just like it is it, it, you gotta ask why do we have to accept this lifestyle? Why do we have to accept, you know, the this the this um, you know, um these people have to all of a sudden be the leaders at our forefront, you know what I mean? Right. That's that's what they put in these movies in in these shows is is sodomites that that um you know um are leaders and 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 they're they're the ones that are oppressed and you're less oppressed and how dare you speak out against them? Cool. And it's right. like you look, you look at these Edomites, they don't put that in their movies. Any other nation of people, they don't put that in their movies. But us, we have to have it. And it comes to show how how you know um. 
I don't want to say it like this, Ak, but I might have to say it like this. Like it shows, you know, what, what's that scripture say? When the when the, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice, but when the wicked bear rule, the the people mourn, right? Right. And it's twofold because it just shows the righteous spirit of Israel in a sense, right? Israelites will go fight and agree and be like, yes, we should support this. Yes, gay people exist. We have to, you know speak up and you know we got to accept our gay black and brown brothers and sisters that's always their 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 attitude you know what i mean oh, meanwhile you know the wicked bear rule because they put that on us no other than that, you cannot do this with the asians you cannot put a gay chinese superhero in the, in the asian movie you know what i mean as a matter of fact i don't want salake if i may real quick go ahead go ahead i think it's china they canceled some TV shows because it was not masculine enough. So if it's Damn, not masculine, I... enough, it's 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 not gonna be short on Chinese TV, straight up. That's, that's crazy. What, that's what that's what China did. Like we we don't need to have effeminate men, right? So shows that are you know portraying men being effeminate is 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 banned from Chinese TV. Right. And even even the the Ishmaelites, there was that Buzz Lightyear movie, right? So oh again, God. in the Buzz Lightyear movie, there's a sister who's a Skittle. I remember, yeah, yeah, Khan. Khan. So you know, Why, the movie, right. they, they they made sure they cut the scene, you understand, from their theater where the sister is kissing another woman who is more I think she's an Edomite she's kissing, but whoever, whatever. You understand? But they made sure they cut that part out when they were showing the movie in, uh, I think, uh, whatever Arab country it was shown, you know? Because for them, right. you're not going to prey on on our kids or, you know, you're not going to go against the culture that we believe because in in the they would say that in the Quran, right, it's wrong to be a sodomite. You understand? That's why they would like no. You're not gonna show that show that in our theaters. We we're against it. You understand? And they and they have no problem being called homophobic, whatever the case is, because they would just say it goes against Islam. Well, guess what? Right. This is why you know black, Hispanics, and native. We have a problem with homosexuality. It goes against the Bible. It goes against our culture. That you is understand? not our culture. Damn right. And it's not just to clarify something. The UPK don't hate so gay people you understand your upk actually shows so much love to gay people they, we're telling them not to be gay no more to avoid getting the monkey yeah. and AIDS. right right <laughs> whatever it is, you understand god you know what i mean that's love you know what i mean that's love telling you what you're doing is wrong and you shouldn't do it anymore right that's love like everyone else you know the people that are encouraging you to live that lifestyle they hate you and they want to see you you know and that's crazy, you know what I mean? And let me say this too. We have, even if we didn't, you know, like, we don't have to accept your lifestyle. You know what I huh? mean? Like, how, how cruel and selfish is that of you on your behalf to try and force people to accept your lifestyle? You know what I mean? I don't know how many incidents there's been, right? Um, uh, There was a story. Actually, let me see if I can bring that story out. Right? Kind of a kind. There was a big, this, this happened out here, um, at an Issacry restaurant, man, where um the, the manager told them a sodomite couple, I guess they were kissing in the line, and he told them not to do that. And, and I don't know if they got the restaurant got sued or what. But you know what I mean? It's like that you got to accept that you cannot speak against it. You know what I mean? So this is the um so this is the article right here. So first of all, this this the owner, an acting community said the manager. Okay, so this is a a, a, a Edomite <laughs> out, of, out of everything, right? Good night. Restaurant's called El Compadre. El Compadre fires manager who scolded gay actor for kissing his date at LA restaurant. Drew Jorej, an L.A.-based actor and comedian, 
dined at a Mexican restaurant at Compadre in Echo Park, which is another area that's highly gentrified. On Monday evening last night, I went on a really nice date with a really sad, disgusting, hateful moment in the middle, he said. <laughs> so he said, sad, <laughs> disgusting, and hateful moment. He wrote to his 24,000 followers on Instagram the next morning. Oh God, Go ahead, Ak. Emphasis on disgusting. Right. Yeah. We'll tell you what the manager thought was disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> By the end of his date, he alleges a restaurant employee scolded them both for a public display of affection, not because it wasn't allowed, but because they are gay. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. <laughs> you know, no, nah, I mean, I don't care if you're kissing, but you know, you're gay. You can't be there. It, it reminds me, it's like, it's like that show the Boondocks. You had, you, you had a little nigga Riley saying, "Yo, nigga, you gay." You know, right? It's <laughs> a so like Here's the tweet. He goes, "Last night at El Compadre, he tagged the restaurant in Echo Park. I was reprimanded by a manager." For kissing another man, George added in the Twitter post Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. in the middle of our second drink, told this this is a family restaurant and we don't allow that behavior here. I will never be back. And I encourage you all to find another place too. Well, Mr. Whatever your name is, his posts have garnered, garnered hundreds of comments and thousands of likes across social platforms with some calling for a boycott of El Compadre and others flooding the restaurant Yelp pages with one-star reviews this week. After release, releasing an initial statement Tuesday, it eventually deleted El Compadre issued a statement last Wednesday afternoon saying it had fired the employee in question. And, of course, we want to sincerely apologize for the actions of after the night number 12. Restaurant's latest Instagram post read, this is not representative of our core values at El Compadre, and we wanted to let our customers know that the manager has been terminated. We have been in business for almost 50 years, and we accept, appreciate, and value every customer that walks through our doors, and this behavior will never be tolerated in our establishment. That statement continued. We deeply regret how our manager handled this situation. Good night. Throw it on his date. Go ahead, Ad. They, 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 can, they, can, they can boycott, you know, I'm just going to say el, el Diablo, not El Compadre, porque no es mi compa, you know. Right. They could boycott him all, all, all day one. I mean, it's what it is, because I'm going to boycott him for, you know, cultural appropriation. How do you call your restaurant El Compadre? What are you talking about? You know? Right. Call it, call it, so lucky. I was going to say buddy, but pause, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then you might know, you know. You know, they call the restaurant, you know, call the restaurant, I don't know, some Edomite name, some devil name, you know. Don't call it El Compadre. What are you talking about? You know, pinche bastardo. Right. So this guy's a comedian, but, you know, it's like, first of all, you're, you're already going to go back to the restaurant. And then, but then he wants everyone to boycott the restaurant because he told him that you know he didn't like you know, and it's like, it's like I understand the whole thing of discrimination and all that, but at the same time, because you're told you can't kiss you, you know you can't kiss another man in front of a family, like now it's a problem. Not not you you don't face the worst oppression in your life. That's really disgusting because you're told, and then you got to think about it. How, how you know what I mean, like. Shit, you know, like it's like how how you, you do you how do you expect you know everyone else to go 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 follow you? Why? How about you just not go to that restaurant ever again? But no, you got to make everyone boycott. You want the restaurant shut down because of this? <laughs> yeah, gay. Well, why you don't know. you just tell your your community to never go to that restaurant? Come on, come on. Just you know, just you know, tell you know. The restaurant is not allowing us to go there, so let's just not go there. So don't come right. there no more. Right. Like it's like don't get but now you want everybody to, to join you. You want everybody to shut this restaurant down because they told they, they, they told you not to, to be, you know, kissing another man in front at a family restaurant because there's kids there and stuff like that. Damn right. 
I'm pretty sure, you know, like, I don't know what the situation was, how, what they were doing and whatnot, man, but I would imagine that um, it wasn't a sweet show of affection, you know, a sweet, innocent show of affection. That's what I would not be surprised if they was doing some nasty in front of everybody because this guy's a comedian, man, so who knows what he was doing. <laughs> kind but, of good. But, but more to the point is, you know, that, that just shows the um, – the agenda of this community, they want everyone to be with them and want what way and want your business shut down. I don't know if you remember the story. It was on the news about the about the 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 baker that didn't want to bake a cake for a for a gay wedding. Oh, and because he, they, they call for everyone to boycott that business. Like it's like people got their views, man. They got their beliefs too. They don't have to accept what you believe in, man. Like just how about you never go to that place and 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 take your business there? You know what I mean? Go find a pro, you know, um, a pro gay bakery. You know what I mean? Go find. You, know, <laughs> you tell me there's no Mexican restaurants in 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 West Hollywood. You had to go to the one in Echo Park. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. You know what I mean? In, in in your side of town, but you want to go there and then you want to you know make out with your husband in front of everybody. <laughs> I mean, so go ahead. I, I mean, so when I'm walking outside, sometime you know, people are telling me, um, uh, like, okay, no, not me personally, right? So there are signs in the metro not to that letting you know, you know, don't play your music out loud. You know, be mindful of the people around you. You understand? Right. Well, just, just don't be gay in public. You understand? Be mindful of the people around you. Why would? You know, force. Why would you force people to listen to your music out loud while you're blasting it in the bus or the metro? They're like, why would you force people to accept, you know, your your rainbowness outside? You understand in public? Why would you accept? Why would you want? Why would you force people to accept? You know, um, hey, I'm a skittle and I like to show it. We don't. We don't give right. a damn about what people. You know, just don't do it in front of us. You understand? Like, we don't. You don't. We don't want to see that. We don't want to see that shit. Salakia. Right, Rock Yala. Imagine, you know, and th th this is my cut to the sodomites, man. It's like you, you, you want everyone to accept your, you know, your lifestyle as something natural. I bet you don't. I bet you sodomites don't support a um a, a person that commits bestiality. I'm sure you wouldn't say that's natural. I bet if there was a man making out with his dog in front of everybody, you you wouldn't be opposed to to them telling that man to stop. You'd probably be the first one to tell them not to do that in front of everybody. Right. Gotta, right. You know, and that's what the sodomites do not want to understand. Your lifestyle is not natural. It is not. You know what I mean? So, like, it's you were not, not born that way. You were not born that way. You suffer what you suffered. And, and for whatever reason, you think that lifestyle is the answer to it. But I'm going to say this. It's against my culture. I don't sell. Like, you know what I mean? It's against my culture. And if I have a restaurant, you know, and, and you end up doing that, you know, I have the right to refuse business to you. You know what I mean? I have the right to not to not want that done in my restaurant. It's be no different than someone lighting up a blunt in, in, in there. You know what I mean? It'd be Damn no right. different than, than someone doing drugs in my restaurant. And everybody's going to talk about, you know, oh, you're comparing this and that. Yes, I am, because it's it's in the same ballpark. You know what I mean? It's against my culture to get high. To live that lifestyle. For a woman to be dressed half naked, nearly showing everything, I wouldn't want that in my restaurant either. You know what I mean? Kind of what kind. And and you know, like like it's like why you know, like I had to accept that. Just you um, know for, for all for, 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 for the skills community, can you accept that I'm not accepting it? Right. Like why why would you force me to accept it? Like I don't force you to accept me being a, her a heterosexual. You understand? Right. I'm not forcing you to accept that I love women. You understand? Right. Why would you force me to accept that, you know, you're a Skittle? You understand? Like, heterosexuals are not forcing gay people to, you know, have them accept, hey, we're heterosexuals. You know, we, we only deal with the opposite sex. We're not forcing right. you to accept anything. So why would you force us to accept your lifestyle? Right. You understand? Not only that, I remember there was an outrage because 
I think there was a scene, right, where a men and a women were engaging in sexual activities in a TV short movie, and gay people were mad at it. They were like, you know, we shouldn't um, promote that to children. What if children are watching this, you know? But it's like, it's a problem for gay people to, you know, um, see uh, a heterosexual act on TV because supposedly they're concerned about the children. But it's okay to promote this. The, it's okay to promote the, the sale of Skittles to the children. You understand? Either it's on or off TV. You understand? It's like they don't. It's like they're not making sense. So it's okay to promote their lifestyle, but not, but not the natural lifestyle of you know how uh, they're supposed to be when they grow up. I right. mean, it is not. I mean, okay. Let me correct that. It is not okay to promote a uh, sexuality. The kids, they're too young for that. You understand? But what I'm so, saying is that it is natural. So why would you want to promote two people of the same sex kissing each other to children and just, you know, like, why does it bother you to see anything, like, natural? You understand? Why does it bother you right. to see a men and a women engaging in sexual activity? You understand? Right. And all of a sudden, you're concerned for the children. But you're like not it, y'all, like, real quick, priest, not to cut you out, but I just want you know, we, we got we got Officer Kazak out on the scene, not we got him up in here with us, man. Hey, Shalom, I don't want you to be Go on, go on, let continue. Um, man, interesting, go ahead, Salaka, because you know, the one it's like gay people, Salakia, the Skittles are trying to force us to accept their lifestyle, you understand. As if we shouldn't have a problem with their lifestyle, but they have a problem with the the natural, you know, order of things, which is just a man and a woman being together. And all of a sudden, they're when they see that on TV, they're concerned for their children. But if it was a a a a, a rainbow sexual scene, a, you know, they, they they need to be a sense of acceptance because we need to accept all lifestyle. You understand? That, that that that's what really bothers me because we're not for we're not telling them accept us the way we are, we're just telling you we're you you, you can't force us to accept you the way you are, you understand? Right. Because, like Officer Malatma said, it goes against our culture, you understand? It's not our thing, you understand? Salakia, boom bye bye gunshot in a butter boy head, you understand? <laughs> I'm gonna say yeah, I'm gonna say something. Right. In, in my language, oh, my poop. <laughs> yeah, that's my right. Poop. That's right. <laughs> you know, it's um, true what you're saying about this. You know, Shalom uh, Salakia just just cutting in right now, but uh, but you oh, know sorry. the 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 bad part about all this is that it's become the norm in America, and and to be um, to be like this is normal, and to be the way we are is now seen as a threat or abnormal really abnormal and if you don't um if you don't condone this if you're not with this then you become an enemy of it and then you're labeled as what what they call you a uh, hate uh, uh I don't homophobic. Know, homophobic uh you know hate crime or you know anti this anti that now you become labeled now they give you a label for speaking against uh man what the lord calls an abomination right what the lord calls an abomination or what we know as immoral or not morally correct you know and and now that just goes to show you how twisted you know america is and how twisted the society has become where now things like this are are acceptable and the right way of thinking or the the order, like you said, the order of things is uh, is is deemed as uh, as a threat or not right, you know. And you know the the bad part is that you know we come from a generation that grew up knowing between the uh, the difference between you know this and that, and the generation that's coming right. behind us, they have no idea. And by the time they get our age, it will be to them, it will be like, oh, you know, uh, the norm and how it's supposed to be. So as time goes by and time, uh, you know, passes, these things become, you know, normal. That's why the Lord's got to destroy this place. 
He's got to destroy this place because this place it will destroy the order of, of, of things, you know. As long as uh, time continues to go by, the, the way the America thinks or the way it's being adjusted is they'll destroy the uh, what's what's morally right. And so that's why the Lord's got to destroy this place because it can't exist. It can't exist like this. And it's been, now here we go into some history, it's been a fight for for um, these, these uh, whoever it may be, you know, we know it's the Edomites who are who are attempting to make this normal. Now, now I was going to say into history, if you go back into World War II, the reason one of the reasons Germany went into war is because, uh, you know, Hitler and the Germans and all of them were against uh, what the what the Jewish establishment was doing in Berlin during the decadence era. And that was uh, homosexuality and, you know. Uh, the perversion, and if you understand what uh, the world, what uh, um, what Germany was, especially Berlin was in the time of uh, of Hitler's time, you should understand that over there, if you were homosexual over there, you could be. It was Hollywood. That's what it was. Berlin was Hollywood. That's a better way of putting it. That's Berlin, crazy. In the 1940s was Hollywood, and pedophilia and all these things were acceptable out there in Germany. They weren't acceptable here in America yet because America was standing on its, you know, value of God's, you know, their version of God in America and the Protestant and this and that. So it was hard for them to do it here. But there's an interesting book uh, by Henry Ford, the, you know, the famous uh, uh, automobile maker, Henry Ford, who he was he wrote a, he wrote three books about the Jews in America. And he wrote about how, you know, lending these Jewish people to take control in America was going to cause the demise of America. And that's exactly what we see today, the demise of a moral America and the demise of America as a whole, as a society. You know, he wrote about the monetary part of it. And there it is. Here's the monetary part of it, how the American dollar is what uh, moves everything, what, what makes everything move. Whether you buy oil, buy food, buy goods, the American dollar is the world currency, right? The world currency. So, you know, who owns who owns the world currency? Well, of course, it's uh, what is that? The Federal Reserve. And who owns the Federal Reserve? Well, we all know that the Federal Reserve is is a Jewish, uh, uh, you know, a Jewish enterprise. Rockefeller and all these, you know. And so, when you really look at it, they're the ones. And and I'm not going into any conspiracy theories. These are facts, you know. There's difference. And the fact is that these people have, you know, moved from one era, one place to another, one place to another. Oh, there it is. Jews and the story of the Dearborn didn't want told. The story Dearborn didn't want told. Yeah, that's the Henry Ford one. So when you start looking at what Henry Ford was talking about, he knew what he was up against. He knew that these people were going to come into America and they were going to take over not only the dollar before, you know, Henry Ford knew that the dollar was based on silver. You know, on gold, uh, they used to have these uh, these dollar bills that were silver certificates where you could actually take your dollar bill and go into the bank and trade it in for silver certificates. It had value. Now it's all debt. Before, the, the dollar didn't have a, a debt on it. Today, it's a debt, you know, good for debt. And so that's what it is today. It's it's just more debt. And the debt is paid to who? Well, of course, it's paid to, it's paid to the uh, Federal Reserve which is the ones that are behind that in the Federal Reserve. That's the reason why World War II and all that was taking place for the movement of what was going to become, you know, uh, uh, the empire, which is America, this empire right here. You know, the ISUPK is absolutely right. This is an empire. This is, uh, right. uh, you, know, uh, you know, something that's built on and we're all under this kingdom. You know, this is a kingdom and they've built this kingdom and that's what we're under. We're under this kingdom. And people like Henry Ford, you know, He's an Edomite, but I mean, you know, he knew what was what was going on. And it's just very simple. Take a look at history. Take a look at, um, you know, uh, like I said, uh, the decadence era in Germany during World War, World War II. And uh, what was going on in Berlin, it was uh, it was what Hollywood is today. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, you went to uh, uh, in Cuba, you know, uh, the Havana, the Havana was going in the same direction. The Havana was becoming this perverse place where gambling and, you know, sex trade and all that was happening. And, you know, who is that? 
who was that one guy that got caught up in the sex trafficking uh, for kids who died and who supposedly was hung in, in the prison? What was that guy's name? I uh, can't think of his name. Uh, so like Jeffrey Epstein? Yeah, Epstein, exactly. Oh, wow. Epstein knew what was going on. Epstein knew that island that he had. You know, there, there it is. The Epstein, again, he had this island, right, where they would take the rich and famous and do their thing. Well, there is, there is a, there is another portion of, of the same thing that we're talking about with uh, Cuba and other places that taken over. And, you know, once the elite or, you know, the, the rich or these people, really the Edomites take care of it, they are control of it, they begin to do as they please, right? Uh, do what thou wilt. Isn't that what, uh, what's that uh, crazy uh, uh, Satanist says, do, or do as thou wilt? Um, can't think of his name, but... Uh, you know, that Satanist that uh, practices, uh, uh, what was his, um, what, I'm trying to think of his name, it's coming to me, but yeah, the do what they will, which really meant do whatever you want, you know, in their, in their, uh, in their version of it, do whatever you want, do, do whatever you want to do, you know, that's, that's what they do, but yeah, this is, this is what it is, what is a private island, he says, you know, and it was just uh, do whatever you want to do there, you know. That, that's what it was. And, and that's what we're seeing. That's what America has become. It's become uh, the land of do whatever you want to do and changing the moral code of things and, you know, just becoming corrupt and it's becoming more and more and more corrupt. You know, uh, what did the Bible say? The nation uh, uh, nation uh, against itself cannot stand. And that's what's going to happen right. here. The nation is going to be destroyed because it can't stand, you know, by its own laws or rules that they go because everybody's divided and it's dividing itself more and more and more. And we're going to see the demise of this place and the destruction of America because of, you know, the perversion, because of all that they do. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead, Aki. I'm Salaki. Go ahead. Nah, no sweat. I don't want that's heavy what you're bringing now. You know what I mean? And it's like, Everything we just went through, went over right now from Henry Ford to Jeffrey Epstein to that, you know, situation in L.A. with that Mexican restaurant. You know what I mean? It, it, it all boils down to, like, how we, we, we as a people partake in this oppressor's culture. You know what I mean? That all this, everything, the, the, the Skittles, you know, as Brachiala calls it, you know, the, the alphabet gang, whatever you, you know, call them, the alphabet community, Christmas. Thanksgiving, that's all the oppressor's culture, and when we partake in it, we get destroyed, man. You know what I mean? And 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 that's the thing. Only thing we're telling you, you know, Rasa, is that you got to separate your your spirit from America. You got to understand that that's not our culture. You know what I mean? That's not uh, that's not what you know that that's never been our culture. Don't let don't let this talk of two spiritism and non-binary all of a sudden you know change your mind. I remember. Heard nothing about that. It was never a thing. Now all of a sudden, now all of a sudden, our indigenous ancestors were two spirits and in, in, in non-binary. I don't want. When growing up, you never heard about that. You were never no, told that. The... Go ahead, Ottawa. Tell us. No, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, right. No, no. That's what I was, I, I was done. I was just going to ask you real quick. Like you never heard about that. Oh no, Con, and 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 that goes back to the point I made where the generation that we're dealing with. They're the ones accepting this. They're a generation that's split between America and this, what we call the indigenous spirit. And, you know, the indigenous spirit is very simple. It's just that, uh, you know, a, a lot of us, we, you know, we, we tend to, uh, to understand where we come from. And so we uphold the spirit of our ancestors. But now you got this generation who is going to college, going to these universities. They're being taught this, this uh, non-binary, you know, uh, uh, Two spirit, if you want to call it, but non-binary subject. Where now they're, you know, like that that one idiot that we saw on the street talking about, <laughs> oh, I'm non-binary, and we, there's two spirits, and this and that, and they don't have an answer. When you really get down to uh, to hitting them with real questions, they do not have the answers. Like they get lost yeah. in the translation. When you so when truth comes into your face and starts to go in there and really question. They get lost in in the whole thing, and they they don't have they have no answer, you know. And that's that's where we come in because sometimes we run into people, and you know, uh, man, you know, they question you, 
you know, like this time of year, yeah, I get questioned a lot. Oh, bro, you know, you you know, you don't celebrate Christmas. Well, no, I don't celebrate Christmas. You know, yeah, I'm out, I'm drinking, I'm at the bar, I'm at this, but that's a different story. They, you, but you don't celebrate Christmas. Well, no, I don't. I don't celebrate Christmas. And they wanna, you know, they wanna bring you into the spirit and tell you, well, you know, it's a time of rejoicing and you know, coming together and you know, don't you believe in Christ? Well, now you're mixing yourself up, bro. I thought you were rejoicing. You know, bring yourself together. But now you're talking about Christ and Christmas has nothing to do with Christ. You know, really? nothing to do with, you know, oh, don't you go to church and the Bible? Well, Christmas has nothing to do with the Bible. So, you know, OK, I, I hear you. You know, the Christmas spirit, bring us together, bring family together. OK, well, let's go into that family togetherness. You know, you can do that anytime. You don't have to set, set this special, this date for that. That can be at any time. That is something that should be daily. Like we should have family time. We should treat our family correct all the time. We should be right. with family all the time. We should we should never leave a moment to then call somebody who you didn't speak to all year, right? You didn't say a word to this person all year, but now you want to have Christmas dinner. You want them to show up to your Christmas dinner because you think it's a special time and we should set aside our differences and you know come together at the table for this one day. But this one day is going to be only today, and then tomorrow you're going to go back to being the piece of garbage that you were before this day. You know? Kind of a so, so what kind of what's a special uh, about it? A one a one twenty four hour spirit? Well, that's what it really is. Is a twenty four hour spirit, man. That's what it. That's what they should call it. The twenty four hour spirit. For twenty four hours, we're going to set aside all the you what you said, what you've done, and all this. And we're just going to sit at this table. And you know what? Most likely you're going to sit at that table and there's going to be an argument. There's going right. to be an argument. There's going to be a fight. There's going to be some kind of, you know, this and that. And you're going to go right back and make things worse. And, and you know, and these are the people that, you know, want to sit there and then tell you, oh, you just want to preach about this, about that. Come on, man. It's, a, it's, it's nothing about that. It does have nothing to do with that. You know, the spirit that they're talking about should be daily. And, you know, like a lot of people we know, they're into this, uh, you know, non-binary. Like at the family table, brother, you're going to sit there and you're going to have aunts, uncles, cousins, you know, uh, man, brothers or sisters that are going to come up. They're going to come into your house or into the house and they're bringing their boyfriend or their girlfriend. You know what I'm saying? And you got to right. sit at that table with... A, a family member that that's a disgusting pig. You know what I'm saying? That's a that's disgusting true. pig that 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 thinks that she can she can be with another woman or he can be with another man, and he wants to bring it around the house and introduce this garbage to everybody so that everybody can accept it. And then the right. mom's gonna accept it because that's her son. The father's gonna kind of accept it, but that's your son because the mom accepted it. And you gotta sit there and accept this, uh, this garbage that they're gonna bring to the table. So the Christmas, that's what it's turning into. Christmas is now you gotta be introduced to the new family member, which just so happens to be, you know, uh, uh, the, I don't know what to call them, you know, gay, sodomite, gay, sodomite, Skittles. What do you, you know, what, what you, Skittles, <laughs> Skittles. Right. Because now we don't even know what to call them. You know what I'm saying? Now we don't even um, know the name. Process. Right? Yeah. You and so, like that, I don't, you don't call them. That's it. Yeah, you just don't call them. <laughs> exactly, yeah. But yeah, but this is the this is the problem that now we gotta we gotta sit at a table where now this is this has to be accepted. And since you're not gonna accept it, well then you become the bad guy at that table on this Christmas day. So that's right. what they call it. You know what I'm saying? Because that's, that's the so truth, kind. that's what it is. Salah, out of one. Go ahead. Right, um, Salah, out of one. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna take off. It's already two a.m. over here. Um, again, no, it's always no, a pleasure no. to be on the meta, you know. But um, yeah, out of one. I'm, 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 I'm gonna hit you up still, out of one, yeah. Okay, no, calm, calm. Calm. Yeah, but sure. Hey, yeah, but sure. Concert, like ahead, if man. I could, I don't want to now say like what you brought out is heavy. I don't want because you said you know um 
you got to bring the new family members, new family member, and and all the hatred and all that's out the door. You're sitting at the table. You're all together with the with the with the uncle that molested you. You know what I mean? At Christmas mm-hmm. dinner, you know, and and that's what's crazy is that we put all that aside for that one day. Right. And, you know, you can only think of the emotional trauma that does to that person, because everyone knows what happened, what that man did, and 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 no one talks about it. For the spirit of Christmas, for the kids, <laughs> you know what I mean, and that's crazy. That you know, that's a, that's a that's a crooked, wicked spirit that people are dealing with, and they don't even understand, you know, what it is. Right. But you know, man, you know, uh, that's why it's important to kind of start really looking at at you know what it is, the truth of things, and you know, man, common sense. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's take a look at what this is, and. You know, yeah, you know, okay, not a problem. People are in, in the spirit of, you know, hey, you know, okay, well, whatever, bro. But, you know, but there's more to it. The underlining, the more, there's more to it than just just the that that meets the eye. With that, you know, there's a lot of questions and there's a lot more coming out of it. And and they're not ready for that. They're, no one's ready for that. No one's ready for, for the backlash that's going to come out because... Uh, there's more to that day than just what you think is just, uh, you know, uh, the Christmas spirit. That Christmas right. spirit has a lot more, it, more intention than what people think. You know what I mean? There's a lot right. of questions there. And, and, and that's like one of them, you know, the Christmas spirit is that table. Think about it. The Christmas spirit is that table. It's that dinner. It's that reunion. And that table, that dinner, that reunion has a lot to it. You got pork on that table. Man, I'm not right. Gonna eat pork, right? I'm not gonna eat pork because I'm not. You got white Jesus at that table, but that's man. I'm not gonna. I, I can't accept that. I can't accept the white Jesus. You got Virgin Mary at that table. Be us being Hispanics, man. I'm not gonna accept right. that either. Man, I'm not gonna accept that that uh, Hispanic garbage. You know what I mean? That that white uh, Virgin Mary shit. You know, I'm not. Uh, right. You got, you got uh, that that we were talking about. The uh, the the new family member that's LGBT man, I'm not gonna accept that family member that's LGBT. You got that family member that's uh, that you know that that uh, you know like you said uh, a molester and shit, man. I'm not gonna accept that. You know what I mean? Right. So there's a lot to it, man. There's a lot to it. There's uh, the family member that comes in that brings his uh, his Edomite wife. You know what I right. mean? Right. <laughs> And then you just accept that. Yeah, or or the you know whatever other heathen you know comes to the table, and you gotta accept him, you know, and and you know what I'm not ready to accept. There's a lot at that table that I do not want to accept, and I don't participate right. because of all that. There's those family members who think that you know uh, at that table, that dinner, that reunion, who think that everything is okay, but everything's right. not okay. You know what I mean? Everything's not okay. You're treating other family members, you know, uh, different. You know, you prefer this, you prefer that, and, and that's unacceptable. So that dinner table, that celebration, you know, is questionable. That table, that dinner table is questionable. It's not It's not perfect. It's not right. You want it to be perfect. You want to paint a, per- a perfect picture of it and make it memorable, but those memories are not, you know, they're, they're, they're not there. They're not the same. You want to try to make them like that, but when you're really in, you know, in the truth and you see things for the, what what they really are, then nah, that's not, you know, that's not it. And it's likewise with Thanksgiving, you know, like for me, Thanksgiving, no, uh, unacceptable. I can't do it at Thanksgiving dinner. I can't get together because you choose a day that's garbage, you know, that's man, that's it's ridiculous, you know. So yeah, this is just something else. Go ahead, Malak Masalaga. Now, if I could, I want to say real quick, like it's um, they'll villainize you for not accepting all of that when people don't realize that the reason why you're not accepting it is because what you do, bringing that Edomite spouse, living that you know alternative lifestyle, being a, a a child molester are all things that represent the hatred of my people, that represent right. the demise and evil, you know, and 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 harm to my people. That's why I don't accept it. Not because I just want to be, you know, ignorant or whatever you want to label me. It's because what you're doing is 
is evil, is a straight spit in the face of the rasa. You know what I mean? And people right. will think that's harsh, but it's just the truth, man. If you go get yourself a white woman, you hate brown women. If you if you if you um if you're a man and you're a sodomite, you, you hate brown women. Same thing for brown, you know, live, live that you know that 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 alternative lifestyle, be you know a lesbian. You hate brown men. Time. If you want to get a white husband, you hate brown men. What you do is what y'all are doing is represents hatred. And I don't have right. to accept that hatred. I it's not it's not and if for my sanity and my health, I shouldn't accept it. That's like me accepting, you know, um the 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 uh someone being a child molester, which right. everyone can agree should not be accepted and be allowed. You know what I mean? But that that's what's heavy. I don't want what I also wanted to bring out, sir, is um Real quick, I, I was going to try and touch on it, you know, but we kind of, you know, we got into the, all the other topics that we were talking about, but which is this story. This is what went on, you know, while Rasa was celebrating Christmas. You know what I mean? Let me just play this, bit, this video right quick. Low freezing temperatures were what migrants from Texas faced when they arrived on Christmas Eve at the home of Vice President Kamala Harris in Washington, D.C., once again arranged by Texas Governor Greg Abbott. Three buses from Texas dropped off about 140 people outside the U.S. Naval Observatory on Saturday, Christmas Eve. Immigration activists called the incident particularly cruel because there were young children and babies among those dropped off. And many migrants lacked shoes and other clothing. The Migrant Solidarity Mutual Aid Network, as well as other groups, then picked up the migrants and brought them to shelters where they received like oh, food and warm clothes. The group is also helping many of the arrivals find transportation to reach their final destinations. The White House released a statement accusing Governor Abbott of having abandoned children on the side of the road in below freezing temperatures on Christmas Eve without coordinating with any federal or local authorities. And at least... We say on the show often, two things can be true at once. Certainly, the situation at the border needs to be addressed. But this here, leaving these families, particularly those children, outside in frigid temperatures on Christmas Eve, hard to describe that as being anything other than cool. How does that accomplish any political purpose whatsoever? And given that's what these men and women and children were used as on Christmas Eve, political pawns, it just is a disgusting act that had no place really happening anytime, but especially on Christmas Eve. And it's kind of hard to believe that Greg Abbott saw this as politically expedient. If I'm thinking about somebody else I'd like to abandon on the side of the road on uh, on a cold Christmas Eve, maybe Greg Abbott. We could like maybe figure out a place where we could dump him uh, to, to suffer in the cold. I, you know, look, I mean, I, there's, a, the, <laughs> there's never been a moment when this stunt, which is all it's been from the very beginning. We've now seen it repeatedly. I've been doing it now for months uh, in different forms. There's never been a moment when it's 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 been anything other than that, right? It's just it's this theater theater of the theater of cruelty, theater of absurdity. They apparently uh, they meaning Republican border state governors who who are trying to make this point see some political mileage in it. I, I don't. Uh, I don't think there's any empirical evidence that this has paid off for any Republican uh, who, who that's, that's done this. Now, look, people like Ron DeSantis and his team will say. Um, you know, uh, it obviously didn't hurt me in my re-election efforts. It didn't hurt Greg Abbott in his re-election efforts either. And because they haven't paid a price for it, uh, I think the logic of it is, well, if it was uh, if it was politically astute in their minds to do this over the summer in Martha's Vineyard, uh, it's uh, it's even more astute to do it because it highlights the uh, it highlights the thing and makes it more makes the case more dramatically. Now, I think for most normal humans, we sit here and look and say these are children, and you're using them in this disgusting way. But as I say, it's always the case with Republicans who do these things, and any politician who decides to play games like this, if they don't pay a price for it, they'll do it again. And and so far, these guys haven't don't seem to pay a price for it. But what's the audience for this? Is this being cheered on Fox News and other cable conservative cable networks? Is this? We know that the, the border is an issue. Title Forty Two. There's a matter of days before you know the administration believes those scenes at the border are only going to get worse. But that's could be a separate than this. It, it's Christmas Eve. It's freezing temperatures. Who's cheering this on? I know. I don't even see the most hardcore of red meat Trump supporters watching state media enjoying this because it's Christmas Eve and who wants to see babies and children and people who don't have shoes dropped in freezing frigid temperatures. It's just, 
I do not know why Greg Abbott thinks that this is actually something that's going to bolster his political fortunes. Call a concert. You know, you know, the, the thing that really gets you is that they didn't do that to the uh who was that? Uh, the people that came from uh, Russia, or what was that? Uh, the Ukrainians. Ukrainians. They didn't do that right. to the Ukrainians. The Ukrainians didn't go through anything like that, and Mexico didn't do that to the Ukrainians. Mexico didn't didn't have anything to do with anything that would treat uh, any Ukrainian in any manner that was irrespectable to humans. You know what I mean? Or to people oh, in the as a whole. You know, and they didn't do that, but America does that to Hispanic people. You know, they use right. this as 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 uh, as as leverage uh, for their little games that they play. And these guys sit there and they're saying all this stuff. But in reality, they're part of the whole big plan, too. You know what I mean? They're right. the reason why they're doing it is because they're going against who? The Republicans? Or is that what he said? The Republicans? Nice. Uh, you know, they're saying, who, what Republicans? It's not it's not only the Republicans. It's the Democrats also. It's both parties. Both parties are doing this. They're all the same. They're just trying to. They're just trying to uh, use this to make that party look bad. Look at what this right. party is doing. Look at what these people are doing, and they're trying to make them look bad for that. The vote goes in the opposite direction. Right. They're using the same. They're using the this, what this is a media game for them, and a playing field for them. They found an advantage. Oh, let's use this to make them look bad. But the reality is that these Hispanic people, man, you know, they're being played. They're 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 on this on this board game, and they're the pawns that are being played on on either position. They're sitting there thinking they're disgusted, but they're not disgusted. They really don't give a damn. To them, it's just another Mexican, you know. And they got their shot at putting it on camera and showing the world what Republicans or Democrats do and how wicked they are. But in reality, they're both wicked. You know what I mean? Because did nobody right. help the Hispanics, the Democrats, nor the Republicans when they were being caged up in the borders on the detention centers? None of them did anything to help them as a whole. You know what I mean? So it, it, it's, you know, they're using this as, as a media, you know, hype to help them out, to help themselves out. Whoever plays, uh, whoever pays MSNBC, whatever side, pays them for their they, they use this as a as a gimmick for them so who are they really fooling you know what i mean who are they really t- are they bringing it to the attention of course they're bringing it to the attention they're bringing it to the attention because it's for their own benefit you know what i mean yeah, if i could i don't want let me let me say this sir this shows you and this is why i said and i'm gonna say it again this is why the oppressor is the devil that the bible speaks of because this is how incompassionate this so-called white man is. He, he will use brown men, women, and children, babies, as a political prop to prove a point. You know what I mean? Right. Go dump right. them off in the freezing cold to prove a point. This isn't, you know, I don't, I don't know what, what, what would be the humane way to, 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 to prove a point. You know, in politics, I'm pretty sure it doesn't exist. Right. Right. You're going to uh, use, you know, men, women, and children to prove, you know, you're going you to transport them out of your state, send them somewhere where, you know, you don't know where they're going to go or what they're going to do, leave them with nothing, leave them out in the cold. It just shows you how inhumane you are as a nation. You know what I mean? And they're only doing mean. this to us. They're not doing this to the Ukrainians, like you said, sir. They're not doing this to the Chinese. They're not doing this to the Arabs. I mean, I'm getting sick and tired of when I hear when know the the stereotype of illegal immigrant being a brown face. You know what I mean? Being uh, Rasta, that's who always gets the finger. You know who the fingers always pointed at us when it damn well isn't us. That's why these agencies, like you said, I don't want that's heavy because they're the ones that 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 um broadcast the 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 waves of migrants coming over here, as they say. I mean. They want to broadcast that and make it seem like there's a lot of us coming over here, trying to come in here illegally because we're too lazy to do it the right way. Right. When that's not the case at all. And then when you got bigger waves of other nations, when you got the Ukrainians, which I'm pretty sure there was an outbreak of COVID going on with them, but you didn't use the Title 42 to keep them from coming into America. You know what I mean? 
And, and that's why I was that thinking. Footage, uh, uh, Malag, man, if you look at that footage, if you really take a good look at that footage, they're making it seem like there's thousands of immigrants coming across the border. But when you start looking at those buses, they show the same footage over and over again, maybe like three or four, five, six, seven, ten different Mexicans boarding, getting out of the bus. Where are the thousands that they're talking about? Where are the hundreds that are being left there? Why don't they show footage of all the Mexicans out of there? Why don't they show, uh, you know, uh, 20, 40, 50 Mexicans or whatever they call them, you know, whatever they want to label us, you know, out there. They don't do that. They're just showing the same little footage over and over again. You know what I'm saying? As if they're hiring people to do these these uh, these propaganda stunts, you know, and using us as the as the bait for their for their garbage. You know what I mean? If you really take a look at that footage, I seen that footage where they were saying that hundreds of uh, illegal immigrants were being dropped off in Washington D.C. And when you look at the footage, there's not hundreds of Mexicans. There's right. maybe ten. There's maybe a bus with 20, 30 of them on there. Maybe 20, maybe 30. And I'm going to say maybe 20. The hundreds don't appear there. I don't know where they're getting these numbers from, but they're they're doing the propaganda on the news that it's thousands, and we don't see the thousands. There is no thousands. Where are these thousands? Because here in L.A., we don't see thousands. We, where are all these illegal immigrants are talking about? You know what I'm saying? Go ahead, Salam. Oh, God. Here's the, here's the other story. Look at them in, in El Paso. Border from Texas to California is estimated tens of thousands of migrants like you said. are waiting for Title 42 restrictions to end so they can enter the U.S. and seek asylum. They will likely spend Christmas waiting in the cold. Omar Villafranca has the latest from El Paso, Texas, one city struggling to handle the overflow. Overflow. In just the last week alone, nearly 6,000 migrants have been shuttled through El Paso to cities across the country to process their immigration claims. But that still leaves thousands of migrants in El Paso. And with shelters overcrowded, city leaders opened the convention center overnight. It can house more than 1,000 migrants. They want to get as many people as possible off the streets with temperatures dropping below freezing this week. And now conditions are getting worse with a potentially deadly cold snap on the way. Yet the line to enter El Paso does not end. Up to a thousand people wait along the fence. Stephanie Rubio and her two-year-old son traveled here from the Dominican Republic. You want a future? But she was greeted with armed soldiers, military vehicles, and razor wire all part of Texas Republican Governor Greg Abbott's Operation Lone Star. The people who were crossing uh, into El Paso uh, should be blockaded. Yala Narueles, who traveled all the way from Venezuela. For CBS Mornings, Omar Villafranca in El Paso, Texas. Man, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. And you know, you know what you're seeing there, is uh, you know it's not on it's not really when when you look at that it's not really Mexican people it seems like Mexican people you know where are they at you're looking at people from Dominican Republic from Venezuela hey. you know from other Good countries that. other Salvador. countries you know, El Salvador and you're looking at countries that are in political uh, mayhem right now you know Venezuela right. come on man Venezuela they don't even have food out there you know what I mean they're seeking asylum they're seeking help I uh, thought America was a place you know, for asylum, they sure did take in all those uh, Ukrainians right away. You know what right. I mean? But what about these people? These people, these uh, Latin American people, they're, they're going through the same thing. You know what I'm saying? They should be, you know, accepted immediately. You know what I mean? Damn, where are the Ukrainians at? The hundreds and thousands. Uh, you don't even hear about them anymore. Right. You know, you don't even hear about these thousands of Ukrainians. Well, what happened to that news? Where'd that you know, go? They are. I'll tell you who what they doing. I don't want them. Them heathens are coming in here, taking advantage of the the section eight of the welfare. Right. They're getting that money. You know what they doing? They going to, to my slavery, buying a gang of PlayStation fives and TVs and 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 um all types of electronics and reselling them online so they can make their money. That's what they do. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, right and you know what I mean? 
probably um, opening up dispensaries and restaurants and right. yeah. thing. Yeah. Meanwhile, right. my people are out there, out there in the cold. You saw that man asking for water for his children. Oh, how dare yeah, for his children. Good, yeah. For that, and you need them. Um, right. right, John, you know absolutely. I mean? You're right about that. You're right about that, man. And that that's, happened. That's a that good happened. thing. And if I could, um, that happened on Christmas Eve and on Christmas Day, while a lot of y'all were out there celebrating, uh, uh, eating dinner and, and being around that goddamn stinking Christmas tree, not willing to give up Christmas. You know what I mean? Yeah, all that money that you spent for those presents, for that tree, for your decorations, all that money went to the Ukrainians who got over your people that are waiting right. in line in the cold. And your dumbass will say that, that oh, those people, you know, they, they, they're rushing over here because they ended Title 42. They didn't, they didn't, you know, they should have just stayed back home. They should have just stayed, you know, and, and back in Venezuela, back in Honduras. They, 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 they don't need to come here right now. We don't, we don't have the ability to support them. Good. Right. Come, From our right, own people. Right. Yeah. right. Come on. You don't have to go far. You don't have to go across the world. It's happening right here, right in your backyard. You know what I mean? Right. And we just got to be aware of it. You know what I mean? You just got to be aware of it. Eventually, you know, things start to catch up and you're going to have to do something about it. You know, it'll it'll be here soon. It'll be here soon. Black man, you know, I got out of work real oh, late. No oh, sweat. I don't want Man, you know, it was kind of yeah, heavy for me at work, especially with all the COVID, you know. Oh, yeah, man. And Today's like right after Christmas, Christmas yeah, Day. Yeah, I, don't, man, I can only yeah, imagine. Yeah. I'm happy yeah. I had today off. I don't want to like you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Work. Again, again, tomorrow, you know, we're slaving in oh, this place. You know right, I mean? right. We're slaving in this place. And it's a, man, it's a madhouse out there. My job, it's a, it's a madhouse. You know what I mean? And, oh, uh, you know, everybody's trying to take their days off right now. Everybody, you know, everybody's trying to get days off. So, you know, we're piling right. on the work. And those of us who do go to work uh, continually, you know. And so, right. so man, so like you for jumping on late, you know what I mean? But next nah, week again, wow, wow, wow. yeah, come on, next week again, of course, we're here again. You know, hopefully things go back to normal after all this uh, holiday garbage goes away. Hopefully things go right. back to normal for all of us, you know what I mean? All right, yeah, come with come, sir. I mean, you know, it's always, you know, a pleasure, you know, to, to, to do this show, you know, and Man, all the canales, all of us, man, we're we gonna hold it down because you know this is the show for 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 all that you know for 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 us. So yeah, I don't want we you know like we gonna we gonna hold it down as best we can. Mm, the water, the water. With that, man, I'm gonna let you go because I still gotta right, I I still get some rest, man. But the water for uh, for starting the show off and doing it, man, most high in Christ for you and the brothers who are uh, hold it down. You know. When one of us don't hold it down, the other one does. But we're the ISGPK okay. coming out of 150 Harlem, New York City. And you know that we're going to come out here with this heavy, heavy truth. You know okay. what I mean? Especially every Monday right here on La Neta with the Malakma. And, uh, you know, of course, me, because of y'all and all the other brothers who, uh, who jump on to, uh, to do the best we can to spread this news of what's going on with our people here in, uh, here in uh, occupied territory in northern Mexico. You know what I mean? Come on, come on sir. I'm right, but with that, yeah, I don't want. Go ahead. No, what I would say, man, it's like right now, Rasa. This is why we're bringing these stories out. You know, we the things we discuss. These are things that affect us. You know what I mean? And um, we we um ask y'all to like and share, subscribe to our channel. We got we got our channel on YouTube. Tune into ISUPK Mexico. You know what I mean? For for the classes that we teach. You know, we teach this carnalismo because ultimately this is the answer to how to to address all these things that 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 plague us. You know what I mean? If we come mm -hmm. together in, in in carnalismo here in the states, right, throughout Mexico, throughout Latino America, Sur America, right, then you want to have that issue right there at the border right now. You know what I mean? Right. And I know that's gonna go over a lot of your, your your heads. You know what I mean? But the other nations, the chinos, the reason why you don't see chinos at that border. There's a reason right. why you, you don't see Arabs and, and East Indians because they come together with their people. So they're able to find ways to bypass, you know, all those issues, all those things that play them. You know what I mean? So that's what we need to do as a, as a Rasa is we need to come together with our own and love our own so that we can help our Rasa out there, man. And, and, even, when we do, and even when we do get here, uh, life is a struggle every day. Right. 
Right. This is a struggle okay. every day. Even for us, man, that we've been here since day one, you know, or grew up in this place, man. To us, it's, you know, not because, uh, you know, I, I know a lot of, uh, I don't know, the better half lives, right? But uh, it's a struggle for us out here, man. It's a struggle. Right. California is a goddamn struggle out here. Good Ooh. night. You know what I'm saying? California is a struggle out here. You know, shit. You pay for it. Yeah, but with that, can you know, the water right, for having man. me. Come with concert. Not the water to you. I don't want to. Next week, Shalom, Israel. Hey, Shalom, Rasa. Yabashabakta.